We're back. <laughs> We're coming back anyway. Sorry about that, guys. All right, let's hope we get 500 people in this room now. Hi. You back, Sue? Susan? Who is that? That. It's me, Darshna. Oh, hi. <laughs> I just text you. You text me? No, I mean, I, I could not log in because it says it's up, up to capacity. So. Yes, we're, wor we're, uh, we're working on that behind the scenes here. It was a, a little uh, frantic change <laughs> for us. So I'm, I'm waiting for that number to go past 100. Keep our fingers crossed that it worked this time. <laughs> we're getting close. Well, I was having trouble logging in and I just got in. So yay. <laughs> good, good. But right. I used a colortv.com link. Looks like you're uh, at a hundred though. Yeah, it just stopped at the hundred. Okay. All right. Is Susan back on? Or did she <laughs> she not get in? No. All right. Deb, I'm on. I'm on. Hold on. Going and we're just going to have to figure it out. So go ahead. You could keep going and uh, on with the show. Can um, I ask a quick oh. question? Of course. Good morning. Uh, this is Lisa Brackett. And I'm wondering if somewhere in KWU is there printables? Like, is there like a manual that we can print out? Yes, if there is a display. If you there is a printable, if you go to your MyKW and okay. under education, you'll see Ignite 2.0 and there's student materials. They're also in our Ignite 2.0 Facebook group page. So you can find every session, it, um, all of the manuals are right there on that page. So that page is such a great resource for everybody. So if you are not in our Facebook private Ignite 2.0 New England page, I will put that link in, in the uh, chat section in a second. I'm just still trying to work on this uh, capacity issue. So uh, keep an okay. eye out for that, but uh, everything is in that group. Okay, and if you guys could bear with me here, I am just trying to get my displays working here so that um <laughs> that you can see the slideshow okay can you guys see that yes okay yay all right so we're back on <laughs> yeah Okay, I, I'm just going to kind of really pick up where we left off, um, which was just an introduction to Ignite. Um, this first section being Spark, which will hopefully um, give you some inspiration, some motivation to get your businesses going, um, you know, help you with what the activities are that you need to do today to drive your business and to get you started for 2021 and for an awesome 2021 because really the decision is up to you. You know, how big do you want your business to be? How many people do you wanna be able to help? How many lives do you wanna be able to impact? That really is up to you. It can be a small number or it can be an enormous number. So that really is a, a personal decision. And if you're here to have a big business, a big life and impact a lot of people's lives, then this is a great way to start 2021. So let's get right into it. And next slide here. There you go. So this, I'm gonna bump, jump right over to what successful agents do every day. And I love this slide uh, because it really gets down into the two sections of, you know, what you should be focusing on. And, you know, you're just starting out and whether you're just starting out or whether you've been in this business for a long time, the grow your business part is the most important part. If you can't, if you don't learn how to grow your business, then there's nothing to run. Um, and that really all starts with lead generation. 
and you know lead generation is you you know you never okay. get to move to the right side of the run your business if you don't learn and master and find a way to really embrace lead generation lead generation can be a lot of fun there's a lot of different avenues for lead generation which you know tomorrow's session is on lead generation you're going to definitely jump into a lot more of the the nitty gritties on the house um, of that piece of it, but we're going to be talking about lead generation a lot over these next uh, over this next month. Um, so it's it's all about the lead. Lead generation it basically equals caring about people. So you know my, the 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 mind will believe whatever you tell it. So a lot of times you'll say lead generation and people will go, I don't want to do that. I don't want to pick up the phone. I don't want to talk to people. So you really need to tell your mind and tell yourself every day that I love to lead generate. I lead generate so that I can help people and smile when you say it because that really is what you're doing. And the more you are focused on that and the more you internalize that and the more you believe it, that phone gets so much easier to pick up. That Facebook message that you're gonna send to reach out to someone becomes so much easier when you really internalize that lead generation equals caring and helping about other people. Um, the other piece of that is, you know, make seller listing presentations and get listings. Listings are really where it's at. You're probably going to hear that for the rest of your career without, with, with whatever kind of training you do it with Keller Williams. Um, you really need to be able to make a list, a seller listing presentation and get listings to grow your business. Um, and then make buyer presentations. And, you know, when you, when you get listings, you get more buyers. They, they really do come hand in hand. You need to be able to work with both. Um, and then preview real estate. That's the, that's the really the four main focuses of growing your businesses. Uh, I know when, when they developed this course, they spoke to a lot of very successful agents, and this is the feedback that they've gotten. Uh, how do you build a strong business? You start with lead generation. Um, and the, the beauty of that is that lead generation can look different for all of us. You know, people do business with people that they like. And your sphere, which we're going to be talking a lot about today, the people that already know and love and like you and trust you, they're going to be happy for you to be doing to be starting a new business. They're going to be happy for you relaunching your business. Um, you know, we focus on our sphere very heavily and we reach out to them constantly because, you know, our sphere, the people that know and like John and Susan Kenyon and want to do business with John and Susan Kenyon. Um, so we really, you know, we focus on them. Uh, the daily activities of lead generation will help you get to the other half of this page, which is run your business, which looks like marketing to seller listings, show buyers houses, negotiate contracts, super fun. We're gonna talk about that later too in, in this course. Um, transaction management to closing, vendor management, setting goals, risk and compliance, which is so important in this business. Um, to, to really be aware of protecting yourself, protecting your customers and your clients, um, and attending training and getting coaching, which good for you guys for being part of Keller Williams, because you're going to have the opportunity to get as much training and coaching that as you need. Um, and, and then most importantly, too, um, is managing your money, because you can have a lot of commission income, but if you're not managing your money, a lot of it could be going to the wrong places. So towards the end of Ignite, there'll be a whole session on financials, which is, is very important. Um, so let's just jump right into growing your business. Unless someone has a question, just again, I'm just gonna keep reminding you, jump right in and I ask have a question, Sue. Hi. Uh, not to start again, but you're, you're not, I think you want us to see just the, we can see all the slides. It looks, it's a oh. little hard. I think you're sharing the present your presentation, but it doesn't Let matter me to me. Let me see just, if that helps. Yeah, that's better. Is that better? No, thank you. I appreciate that. 
because I couldn't tell from the display what you guys are seeing. And my admin usually is on to kind of send me messages when I'm screwing up the technology part. <laughs> well, so it I'll, is funny when you're on that side. Yeah. All right, you're in good shape. Thank you, thank you. And hey, there's proof. You don't have to be a technology genius <laughs> to be successful in this business because that's not my forte. I definitely leverage the technology piece out. Um, yeah. So success leaves clues, and those clues start with lead generation. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep bringing uh, and bringing that uh, nailing that cough that nail in and driving that home to really be lead generating all the time. Okay, so we are going to start with um, at at the beginning. If we're gonna be having a successful business, we have to have goals. So the whole purpose of Spark, which is these first couple of weeks here, is to establish the goal that you are going to set an appointment. You're going to set an appointment within the first two weeks. And if you leave here today and you set an appointment, then raise the bar and say, I'm gonna get another appointment and another appointment. The more appointments that you get, the more successful that your business is going to be. Um, if you tell yourself that that's your goal, then don't give up until you get there. So you're really making a big time commitment to be here from nine to 12 every day. If your goal is to get an appointment, then you have to time block in there. When am I gonna work on getting the appointment? And you have to start today. So we're gonna be ending our session today by noon. Um, and I'm gonna be encouraging all of you to work on setting that first appointment today and, and being able to come back into this class in these next few Ignite sessions and saying, hey, I've got that first appointment and now I'm working on my second appointment. Um, that is the, the beginning of Spark in these next few sessions is to, is to be getting that appointment. Um, I, you know, we have a, a, a small team here, John and I in Dover, and it's easy to want to jump into this business and maybe it's because you've heard the commission checks are so big or you just wanna get somebody under contract. We talk about lead generation every day and we never talk about the contract. The goal isn't to get a purchase and sales agreement. The goal isn't to be sitting at the closing table. It all starts with the appointment and you, cause you work your way backwards. I wanna be sitting at the closing table, which means I need a purchase and sales agreement which means before that, I need a listing agreement signed or a buyer agency agreement signed. I can't get any of those unless I have had an appointment to get that. And you know what? I'm not gonna get that appointment until I make some contacts. So we're gonna start with making contacts and then we're gonna start with making an appointment. So your first goal is to, is to get that appointment. And we're not gonna leave you hanging. We're gonna help you with how do we get that appointment. Okay. Does anybody on have access to the Gary video? No. Okay. Which I don't have that queued up either. I'm sorry, Jen, if I was supposed to have that queued up to play. Wait, okay, we'll, uh, we'll find it and we'll send it for homework or we'll put it okay. in our, uh, in it, our it really is a, It really is a good video. Um, nothing else about your business will have as big of in, an impact on it as the number of leads that you have. So true. We're going to keep talking about the lead generation, um, getting people through the process of buying and selling real estate is really what it's all about. And it's really, it's a lot of fun. It's really a lot of fun. Um, part of the video that we're not seeing um, is that my favorite quote during the whole part of looking through the materials um, for today and for the other sessions that I'm teaching is that Gary says, dealing with business never takes the place of finding new business. Um, and I, I, I love that so much that um, the for after the first time of teaching this course, I wrote that on a sticky note and it's still in stuck on my monitor and at my my work office. Did somebody have something? I heard a voice. 
No, write it down though, people that if you're, if you are writing anything down, it's definitely a good reminder, no matter how long you've been in the business, that dealing with business never takes the place of finding new business. If you focus on, you know, the running side of your business, this is what happens to your income life. You go up and you go down and you go up and you go down and then you're, you're, your financial life looks more like a roller coaster than it does about anything steady or anything just automatically increasing. Um, so, you know, finding new business, super important. Um, and, and that piece is, is finite. The, the transaction to close part is, is um, stuck in a, a specific period of time, might be 45 to 60 days. But that piece of finding new business is something that we do every single day. It's a constant. We're constantly putting new people into our database. We're constantly reminding people that we are in real estate. We're constantly reminding people that we are here to help. Um, and, and that piece of it is something that is ongoing. What's so great about it is that we're not just after a transaction, we're really out after helping people solve a problem in their lives. It's really a privilege to be able to be in this business and realize that you can be helping people into a great situation. You could be helping people to get out of a tough situation. Um, it, it, it's, it's a great piece of sales when you know that whatever you're doing, you are really helping people. Um, so the dealing with the business part, it never outweighs the, the running the business never outweighs the growing your business and, and getting new business. And that looks a lot like this. Um, this is a, a great graphic on um, building your business. And it starts over here with the whys and hows of lead generation when you're looking at those spirals that are going up and down. The whys and hows of lead generation, um, you know, it starts with 30 minutes daily of updating your contacts. So we're going to start talking about contacts and databases and, um, you know, appointments and stuff like that. It starts with, with contacts. So... We're going to be throwing command in here. I know there's a lot of first time people um, on Ignite right now. I don't know how much everybody has jumped into command. Um, command equals database. So if I use the word database, it's a, it's a little interchangeable um, because I'm old. <laughs> I'm used to using the word database. Um, but you have to have a system. You must have a system for keeping in touch with your contacts. Um, you think that it, you know if you make a contact, and you're just starting, you think you're gonna remember where you left off with those people, you think you're gonna to remember to get back in touch with them in the right amount of time, and then you get busy and then you don't, and then you missed an opportunity to help them. So um, 30 minutes daily of updating your contacts in command. Um, if you haven't started entering your contacts into command, then start today. Today is, the great, today is a great day to start. If you've already started, then Every day, you should be touching that. You should be looking at it. You should be adding to it um, 30 minutes daily. Um, 30, and also 30 minutes every day of practicing scripts with a partner. Notice that I, I ended that with, with a partner. Is it uncomfortable? Yes, it is for a lot of people. But practicing scripts daily is super important. Um, I remember when I first got my license and my husband was already in the business. For those of you from the Portsmouth office, uh, we used to rent a space in Portsmouth and every day my husband who loves scripts and loves lead generation would be on the phone. He left the house at 715 and him and Mark Soler would get on the phone for their entire ride in and they scripted every day. They were loyal to it. Um, they never even stopped with a hi, how was your weekend, Mark? They, you know, you call someone and you jump right into it. Um, so find a scripting partner if you don't have one. Uh, if you don't have anyone in your market center, you are so fortunate that you're in Ignite because there's lots of people here that, that need a scripting partner. And sometimes it's better to go outside of your area. That person might be bringing in a flavor and, or an influence from their market center that you haven't heard. So script daily. 
Um, and then, oh, hi. Hi, it's Pedro. I'm sorry to interrupt Hi, you. Pedro. Um, hey, so what kind of, uh, you probably will get into this later on, but what kind of scripts would you recommend to use in the beginning? What are the most you know, important ones? Yeah, yes, I would just start with, hi, Pedro. How are you today? Live and blessed. <laughs> awesome. That's a great way to start. You have to just pick up the phone and start with, hi, how are you? Um, okay. We definitely will be getting into those. So if you're going to pick a scripting yeah. partner, um, I love the idea of, of having agendas of what you're going to be scripting on. Um, if you're going to be going after for sale by owners, for example, right now, you could be focusing on what are your scripts around you know, pleasure versus pain around a for sale by owner. If you're going to be calling expireds, um, we're a real organic team. So we go right back to the basics with for sale by owners, expireds and sphere and stuff like that. If it's sphere, then have some sphere conversations, uh, scripts around, um, you know, reaching out to the people that already know, like, and trust you with bringing real estate into the conversation. Uh, we are going to be talking about how to bring those subjects up. It's called the Ford, um, the Ford conversation. And so we're gonna be speaking more specifically about that. What I can say, Pedro, is doing it daily will make those conversations easier. And scripting isn't about tricking people or being salesy, it's about honing your craft it's about knowing your business so that when you're speaking with somebody you're not focusing on oh my god how am I going to bring real estate into it oh my god what am I going to say next it's about giving you the opportunity to be able to listen because you already know the scripts so that when they say I don't know what to do I'm running out of space in my house I have three kids homeschooling and now my wife and I are both having to work from home we're out of space you already know what to go into because you've been scripting on that. And it gives you the opportunity to do more listening than it does um, thinking about what you have to say next. I'm not sure if that answered your question, but. No, thank you. Yeah. And over in the Facebook group that hopefully everyone is in, all there's something called the Ignite Script Book. So you might want to go in there and it's all under something called units. And there's a lot of PDFs in there and all of that the participant guide, all that stuff's in there. So it might be a good idea for you to run in there and grab those scripts and give you something to start with. So just want to throw that out there. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you ever get stuck, you have productivity coaches for that. And if you're, I'm sure every market center uh, in the region is like ours. Our, our internal market center Facebook page is just loaded with people that want to help. Right. Um, so you have a ton of resources. Um, so, you know, the third thing was an hour of lead generation, which is calling people and trying to earn new business. The one thing about calling people and the lead generation part is that you have to remember your goal, right? You're calling people to do what? Set an appointment. You're calling people to set an appointment. So when you're working on the setting appointment part and you're calling your sphere, which I, I really hope you folks start with your sphere, we're going to talk more about that. Um, because your sphere is, is going to be invested in, in wanting to help you grow your business. But you have to be on purpose about it. You have to be on purpose about bringing and getting real estate into that conversation to find out how you can help people. Um, and, then, and, and then the fourth one is uh, practicing contracts, right? Because we are, the goal is also to be getting those contracts going. And you don't want to wait until you have someone that says, hey, I went to an open house and I want to write a contract tonight, an offer. That's not the first time you should be looking at the purchase and sales agreement. It's not the first time you should be looking at a, an agency agreement. Um, so you do need to build time in for that. Uh, I'm an advocate of a great morning routine, which kind of goes outside of the whole Ignite schedule where we're here nine to 12. Um, but what that means is if we're here 9 to 12 during Ignite, Ignite, set that time aside in the afternoon to get your job done. Um, once Ignite is over, I would really encourage you guys to flip-flop that and put your, your scripting and your lead gen in the morning because your day has a way of getting a hold of you. Uh, work with your coaches on that. If you're not meeting with your productivity coaches or you don't have that regularly set up in your, in your calendars, 
you know, jot a note down today to do that because they can help you with your, with your calendar. Um, I know our routine is we start with gratitude every day. Um, and then we jump right into scripting and then we jump right into lead generation. Um, and that runs through till 1130. If you, if you don't have an appointment or to go on, then you keep on lead generation. Um, and after we, we actually like, we stop at 1130 on the lead generation generally. Um, and then we do lead follow-up and processing so that we keep that lead generation time organic to calling. And uh, there's a lot of different types of lead generation. I know there's social media and all that, that kind of stuff, but people, I'm gonna be encouraging you to pick up the phone and talk to people. We have to be able to talk to people. Um, they, they need us. There's so many people out there that really need the help. So um, the scripting part will help with that. And then the getting on the phone and, and fumbling your way through with your sphere before those things become organic. You can't say the wrong thing. If you, if you say something and you're like, shoot, I should have said something else. The person on the other end of the phone doesn't know that. So just keep going. Um, why script your ability, your, you script so that your ability to eloquently explain the many facets of real estate, which answers really your question, Pedro, is the scripting part helps you become eloquent in how to speak about real estate. Um, because the words we say matter, um, they define who we are as business owners. We script so that we can be the leader in the room so that we can lead the conversation. We script so that we can build trust. We script so that we can educate. We script so that we can add value to every conversation, to every relationship, every single time. We script, in my opinion, to build relationships. Um, and, and those are really your daily success habits. Your daily success, success habits are the 30 minutes of updating contacts, 30 minutes of scripting with a partner, an hour of lead gen and practicing your contracts. Um, so the circles represent the habits that you need. Um, and then you can move over to the elements, which is gonna be 10-4, which is gonna be the habits and activities we know will make you successful in a shorter period of time so that you can add 10 new people daily to your database so that you can write 10 written handwritten notes. Um, so that you can get appointments. Um, and we're going to talk more about the, those, um, those pieces as we go on. Does anyone have questions on, you know, the habits? The habits are, is spark. The habits is scripting. The habits are going to bring you business so that you can get to the elementals of seller appointments, of buyer appointments, of contracts, of negotiating. We're good. No questions. Hmm. That's okay. Feel free, people, to jump right in. I mean, I can keep going all day on this stuff. I love I love real estate, so <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. But Susan, don't... we have over 70 people watching live on the Facebook group that couldn't come on to here. So oh. if anyone on Facebook has any questions for us, Erin uh, McLaughlin, our other our, one of our PC coaches, is on that watching for comments. So guys, don't feel shy to, to unmute yourself here and ask questions or, or comments. And same thing on the Facebook page when we're streaming live right now. Hi, guys. We know you're here. Uh, mm -hmm. Comment. We're here. We're here to answer any questions you you have. There's a bunch of us on, and um, yeah, that that's it, right, Susan? Anything else? That's it. That's it. Hi, I, I mean, have a question. Yeah. Great. Yay. Yeah, actually, uh, I'm a new agent and also new in uh, USA. Like, uh, I have been here for a year. And lead generation, uh, you know, I'm here with Keller Williams from two months, but it's a major challenge for me because I have a very small network of my own because I'm new here. So what would you suggest me how to build up my contact list? You know, how to increase it? Because I don't have many friends here, many family here. So how about the new people in in here, what you suggest for me, the people like me? That's really a fantastic question. And it's funny, I was when I was talking to my husband this morning before he left for our office, he's like, well, what are you gonna tell people that don't have a sphere if you're talking about your sphere? 
<laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's, it's definitely going to be more of a challenge for you. Um, and you might have to get creative on how you build that sphere. I'm a crazy person. I don't know if anybody else on here loves going to the grocery store. I love going to the grocery store. That's how I build my sphere half the time. Um, any opportunity that I can have to get out there and talk to somebody, especially when I can see the same people over and over again, that's how you, you start building your sphere. Um, if you belong to a gym, we can still get out there. It's a little bit more challenging right now, folks, but get out there. You know, a great way to start building your sphere right now is get onto your neighborhood Facebook pages. I am so active on the town Facebook pages. What you'll notice when you do that, the same people comment over and over and over and over again. What you want to do is have them see you commenting over and over and over again. Offer value. It doesn't have to start off with value in real estate. It just has to be offering value of you as a person, value of some great restaurant that you went to or great takeout that you got to or some great service that you got within town or promoting somebody else in your town that needs help. Um, join a volunteer organization. Guess what? There's a lot of them out there that really need help. Start a food drive. Um, I don't know if N68 Hours of Hunger is big down where you are, but that's big up here where I am. There's, so, there's a couple of even local, small, like grocery store shops, not like chains, like like a package store kind of thing in my town that are supplying bags of food for people that need it. Contact your schools. Your schools are doing things for people that need food right now. Um, think outside the box, get creative, find a way to jump into your community. And then we're going to talk about the Ford scripts, which is going to be how you can bring real estate into that at once you get to that point. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so we are going to start with your sphere. So I, I definitely feel your pain in that you're building your sphere, but it's also, you know, if you, depending on how you look at it, it could be a great opportunity. I think that the community involvement when you don't have a big sphere might be your, the biggest bang for your buck. Um, do what, at what is close to your heart, because the more authentic that you are, the more authentic people are going to receive you. Be transparent. Um, people want to know about you. Uh, the whole, you know, we, we work with our sphere a lot on Facebook. And I know you guys are probably all jumping into building your business page, all that stuff. Your sphere generally, I get more out of my personal page than my business page. Do I post to my business page? We do have someone that posts to a, my business page, but, but I get my money. I get my business from my personal page. So build that up, build it up with a mixture of who you are and real estate. Those people want to see what your life looks like. They want to see what you're doing in your community and always be coming from contribution, always be bringing value in whatever you do. Your Facebook page or your Instagram or your LinkedIn um, or your snaps. I mean, Snapchat is really big for people that are able to uh, really work it. The one thing I will say to all of you is you no longer have the right to use social media the way everybody else does. If you don't like no. that, I don't care. Get over it. It is now a business tool. You now only put things that are positive. Please don't be political. Mm -hmm. Please don't be always drinking or partying. Can you show a cocktail? Absolutely. I do, but I don't show all of them. Mm -hmm. um, add value. Um, be mindful of your appearance on any photos that you're doing on, on social media. Um, look at it as a tool to show your authenticity and your best light. Um, and we'll talk more about that, but you definitely have to be using your social media that way. Um, it, it's a great tool when you use it correctly. What we don't want to do on social media is ever give reason for people to disagree with us because people do business with people that they love, they like, people that they relate to. Um, if you're somebody that's very controversial politically, then you may have a sphere that really likes you, but they're like, 
I think I'm going to call Bev because I, you know, I, she really thinks more like me in these big areas. Don't, don't put yourself in that position. Um, be a little bit neutral with the controversial stuff. That's my personal advice. Your coaches may say something differently, um, but that's what's worked for me. So, so Susan, I just want to mention in the chat section, there are quite, there's a lot of great suggestions that people are, are saying to do for networking, like wear your KW mask everywhere you go, put your name tag on. Some people say put your name tag on upside down. Why? Right. <laughs> so someone could say, hey, right, to engage with you and say, oh, turn it over. You knew it was already upside down, but it's a way to engage with people. Um, buy coffee. Oh, so, so Jeffrey says he buys coffee for people in line that are behind him. And he said, it's a great opportunity for him to now network. I love that idea. Any other ideas you guys have, throw them in the chat. This is for all of us to really help each other out and get some really good ideas. So I love what's going on in the chat. So keep it going, guys. Awesome. awesome. That's a great idea. I might hijack that name tag <laughs> upside down business. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question as well. Um, I was wondering if, you know, it's appropriate to be leaving your business card, say if you are out to eat um, and you have a connection with your waiter or waitress and you just, you know, with the bill, just leave your business card. Do it. Yes. Do Every it. single time. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Absolutely. <laughs> Hey, I would rather ask for forgiveness than permission. So I stick my business card in every bill that I mail out. Um, oh, great. You know, if, if, if I'm giving them business, I'm going to be calling them and asking for, for my business. And I just want them to know what I do. Um, Good idea. You know, why be a secret agent? Let people know what you do. Awesome. Thank you. Susan. <clears throat> Hi. Susan. Hi, as a server, I will say that it's way better than being left religious paraphernalia. <laughs> right. So leave your card, do it. Yeah, you never know when you can help someone. And nice to see you, Jen. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I put it out there whenever I can. Wear your KW gear. Um, it's a little harder in the winter, you know, because I'm typically, you know, your mask is up to here. So you might want a KW mask. My hat's usually down to here. Uh, but get out there, find ways to get out there. And people, you know what, people are really nosy. If like, I seriously, I go to the grocery store five times a week. I love it. I always see people I don't normally get to see. I, I talk to as many people as I can. I talk loudly na by nature anyway. Um, but if I'm, if they're going to be asking me about real estate, you bet I'm talking loudly. And you know what? I got three leads at the grocery store over the holiday weekend from people that are seeing me on Facebook, people, you know, I'm keeping in touch with them. They know I do real estate. They trust me. I bump into the growth, them at the grocery store. It's a reminder. That's right. You're in real estate. I'd like to set an appointment with you after the holidays, because we're thinking of going to Florida. Um, it really does work folks. You just have to keep putting yourself out there. It's, and it's that it's infinite, right? That's that piece of the growing your business that just keeps happening over and constantly all of the time. It's not the transaction, which has a beginning and end date. It's uh, putting yourself out there constantly. Um, so we're gonna start with our family, our friends, our neighbors, our coworkers, our past coworkers. Uh, Jen, if you're from the restaurant business, start, mm -hmm. start letting people know uh, in the restaurant that, you know, that you're an agent. I mean, you, I don't know if your, uh, your boss would let you wear a KW something, but engage your restaurant in helping you grow your business. They want, people generally want to help you. Um, if you had a friend that was opening up a flower shop and they called you and said, I am so excited. I'm starting a new business. I'm opening up a flower shop. If you know, if you ever know of anybody that needs anything, if you need anything, please keep me in mind. Would you want to call them the next time you needed to order flowers for someone? Yes. I, I would. I would want to help them. That's what you're doing. You're telling them, I'm starting a new business. And guess what? Your friends, your family, your coworkers, they want to help you too. Um, because there are people that already know, like, and trust you. Um, and that's why, you know, if you don't like to talk to strangers, start with your, your sphere. Um, if you don't know who to talk to from your sphere, you have an awesome tool right here. 
do to do do to do right here pick it up go to your contacts list i bet you have a ton of them um there was a, a a great piece of math that i learned when i was preparing for this was that if you go to your contacts you find out what that number is um you multiply that by six percent about six percent of your contacts will have a real estate real estate need within the next 12 months it might be hmm. them it might be their mother-in-law it might be their child they might be upsizing they might be downsizing they might be job transferring uh, even in this crazy COVID time people are moving um, people want to get more rural they want to get away from cities they need another room for zooming because they are tired of everybody working at the dining room table um, six percent of your phone contacts could have a real estate need within the next 12 months will those people know that you're in real estate will you be the person that they call that is your job folks be the person that they will contact for information offer them value um, because you never know where it's going to come from okay I have a question if we have a second of course Paige um so I am a brand new agent pretty much just signed and dropped off my paperwork so awesome congratulations <laughs> uh, thank you super exciting but obviously don't have a uh, ton of experience yet so do you have any advice as a new agent how to win that business and you know, say I am a newer agent. I don't have the most experience under my belt, but you know, what makes us stand out and, and how to win that business. You know what? You're here today. That's what makes you stand out. You want to educate yourself. You want to start adding value. You joined the largest real estate company that you could join. You already stand out. Um, I would say as far as, um, you know, you're, you don't want to go out there and say, hi, I'm a brand new agent starting my business. I've never had a transaction. Who wants to list their home? <laughs> um, you know, you don't do that, but leverage what you do have. You have a market center that has a lot of numbers. Go to contract. If you have a, a market center that teaches contracts every week, be there. Um, the more script, people want to, uh, you want to be able to bring them value and you want them, you want to be able to speak eloquently about your craft, your business, your industry. The more you practice that, the more authentic that you will sound, the more comfortable you will be about speaking to people about buying, selling, or investing in real estate. Um, I would, and I did write down scripts that I just wanted to have, like hike. Do you know anyone that wants to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? <laughs> the first few times I said that, it didn't come out so great. Um, but the more I say it, the and the more I believe in it, the more it rolls off my tongue. The less I have to think about it coming out of my mouth. Um, so that would be my advice to you. You have a lot inside of you already, Paige. You just have to foster that. You have to work at it every single day. The 30 minutes of scripting. The 30 minutes of um, adding contacts to your database, the, the 60 minutes of lead generation, the follow-up that you do after that, the practicing your contracts will actually help you a lot because you're going to start reading, regurgitating, internalizing the language that's within the contracts that you will be writing someday. So that would be a starter. And then I would tag on to anything that you can get to. Go to every open house that you can possibly go to. Offer to do open houses for other people. Offer, ask, if, ask anyone, if you have a home inspection that I can go to just to tag along and, and learn, can I go, go to them? I, abs, I love going to home inspections. I learn stuff all the time. It helps me become an expert um, for my folks when I'm shopping with them. So you, you have a lot of resources to learn your business. The more you learn every single day, the more it will come out in, um, the more that it will come out uh, in, a, in a positive and the more you'll sound better every single time you have to say it. Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. I, Susan, I can I add on to that? Cause that was great. That was awesome suggestions. I, 
I just want to share, I was 22 when I got into the business and um, I knew nothing about real estate. Um, I don't know if anybody could relate here, but I know that when I took the pre-licensing course and then I got into the real world of real estate, there was one thing I had to remember from the pre-licensing course, which was there are 40, it's, let's say 43,560 square feet in an acre. That was probably the most important thing from the pre-licensing class that I used over and over again. Other than that, what I learned from there did nothing for me in the real world. And I'll tell you, Paige, um, a lot of the way, I've somehow, some way in 2001, when I got my license, 2002, I got Rookie of the Year. And I'll tell you, the way I did it was I faked it until I made it. If people, <laughs> if people said, oh, I, I see your sign. I had one sign up, but it was on like a main road. And people like, I see your sign everywhere. I, yeah, I am absolutely everywhere. How, who can I help? for you to buy, sell, invest, or rent in real estate. I honestly just faked it until I made it. And here's the other thing. I looked at the hot sheet on MLS every single morning. That was my routine. Every single morning, I looked at the hot sheet because I wanted to know what was coming on, what was coming off, what was getting sold, and what was expired. I wanted to see it. If you don't know how to get onto your MLS yet, that's okay. You'll learn how to get there. But if you know your market, when people ask you, hey, how's the market? You're going to be able to say, you know what? We had zero listings come on yesterday, but we had 10 closings. You know what that tells me? That tells me that our market needs inventory. Do you know anybody looking to sell their house? It gives you a better opportunity to have a better conversation rather than just, yeah, it's a hot market, right? So, so my suggestion, just, just learn the market and fake it until you make it. I know some people don't like that term and it. I'm okay with it because that's what I Absolutely. did. <laughs> Thank you both so much. I can speak to that. I have a quick story. I was paralyzed with fear of, oh my God, I'm so afraid they're going to ask me something that they think I should know and I don't. And my friend who was Miss Corporate America said, all you do is you say, that's a great question. Let me make sure I have the most up-to-date information and I'll get back to you. So right. she was my first buyer and she bought a house on an island. So the agent says to me, so you know that you're going to have to have a site assessment. And my friend looks at me and goes, what's the site assessment? I said, that's <laughs> a great question. Let me make sure I have the most up-to-date information. So it gives you time to research, ask questions and get back to them. Absolutely. That's awesome. Cool. I think that getting back to people is really powerful too, because, you know, the more you can, so now you have a reason to put them, the contact in your database in command um, and set them up on those reminders on, on getting back to them. Now they've already told you that they're like, thank you for raising your hand and telling me that you're interested in the market. Now you could set a reminder to call them every month and tell them about the market. Um, Cause they've already told you that they have an interest and until they tell you they don't, I would just keep going with that. For sure. Great right. question. So let's talk more about your sphere. Let me flip my page here. Um, they are people that you've met in one way, shape or form. Um, I, as far as my, when I'm working with my sphere, I really am doing a lot of that through um, social media and through calling. So I am making sure that um, I set a set time aside to add them to my Facebook um, friend list. Um, and if uh, sometimes I, you can work that vice versa, if you're trying to figure out in your working in command and adding contacts, you can go to your social media accounts. Who are you connected with already? Those are people that you can put into command. Um, you know, you're calling them, making sure that you have all of their contact information. If they're in your sphere so on a social media platform, you might not have their physical address, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so that's an opportunity for you to call and get them. Hey, I'm starting my new business. I wanna make sure I have all of your information. You know, if, is there anything of value that I can add to you? Have you been looking at the market? that kind of thing. So you can be putting those notes into command. You know what you're going to be bringing up the next time. I put a lot of personal stuff in uh, on, on my sphere into my database so that when I am speaking with them, it's a very warm call. I know if they have kids. I know how old they are. I know if they're having challenges with remote learning right now. Um, pets, uh, you know, people love their pets. 
my dog is sitting right next to me. I love him. And sure anybody so. that wants to ask me about him, that, oh, but kind of it, if people ask me about my pet, then generally I'm going to start with a smile on my face. Isn't that a great way going into a, a lead generation call? Um, uh, Susan, can I ask a question? Yeah. So where do you, I'm, I'm still getting used to using command primarily because I think it's really important that command be the focus of what I'm doing and get rid of a lot of the third party. Um, where do you put these notes you're talking about? Do you just put it in that, that generic note field, add a note, add a note, and keep scanning it each time you call them? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And um, yeah. I put it in there. And sometimes I can even put a note to myself in there. Um, so if they bring up something during the conversation that I'm going to want to hone in on, like, for example, um, my, I might be talking to someone whose parents are getting older and they own a house and I'm going to be, I'm going to be wanting to bring up maybe some pain points to them. Like I want to know genuinely how is that going for you how are your parents managing their their home who's maintaining that is that a burden on you and your siblings to be doing the the maintenance on that and the plowing and the lawn mowing um so that i can i can be on top of asking about that the next time if they're moving down the road of maybe needing to sell that home um, maybe you can just offer help in services you know, the best, we run our business, our motto is relationship service results in that order, very specifically, I start with the relationship every single time the relationship is the most important piece to me. So in that scenario, I'm going to want to offer value, I'm going to want to offer help, I'm going to want to build that relationship. Maybe I can look up and research, um, you know, yard maintenance people that could help them, uh, or people that can shovel for the for for their parents while it's winter season. Maybe it's going to be a food service that can bring them food. Um, are you struggling with housekeeping? Would it be helpful for you if I sent you some names of some house cleaners that could go clean your parents' house, you know, once a week or something? Like, how can I help? Because the relationship is what's important. Now, I'm also going to be reminding my sphere that I'm in the business of buying, of helping people buy, sell, and invest in real estate. So when they need me, when they need that, I'm already in relationship with them. I should be their first call if I'm doing my job correctly. And it's not just a job. I believe this. Like, this is my life. I, I truly, authentically believe this. So I need to be showing them that. that that's how I would do that. Hey, and, and Sue, and thanks, Vinny, that's a good question. Just to go back to Paige, when you're talking about uh, lawn care people or any kind of a vendor or any kind of a service person, make sure you have several of those in your database. You need people, not just your sphere and not just people that you're going to help, but people that or building your own team to service your clients. So as a newer agent, that's a great thing to do. You know, if you see service people out and about, you see a nice looking van with an electrician on it, give them your card, ask them how they're doing, how's their business. And you'd be very clear, hey, I'm just building my business and I'd love, I, I, don't, I don't know a lot of electricians. They'd be very happy to give you their card or more their phone number because they probably maybe don't have a card. So that's even a better connection. And, you know, so just as a, another way to build your business is with these folks that help our clients. So don't forget that piece. Absolutely. And, and your sphere doesn't have to be people that you know really well. Mm -hmm. It's just people that you've met. So if you are at the grocery store and for some reason you strike up a conversation with somebody that's also looking at artichokes and you get their name and number and something happens, go go home and Facebook friend them right away. Yeah. Now they start becoming your sphere um, and things can happen organically. Now you're, you're, you're being on purpose when you're meeting new people about getting their contact information so that you can go and add them to your sphere. It, it happens one person at a time. Um, and then as soon as you add, you're friending them on Facebook, you're putting them in command uh, and you're finding ways to reach out to them. <clears throat> Um, oh, the waves. I, I love this. I love this one. Um, so stay in touch with your sphere. Um, and one, if you are a secret agent, 
you're not staying in touch with your sphere correctly. You want people to know that you're in real estate. Um, it, there's kind of a, a two pronged thing here on making sure that people know that you're in real estate. You don't want to be the agent that only talks about real estate <laughs> in your Facebook page. Otherwise, you're like that Avon lady, right, where people see the Avon lady coming down the street and they go the other direction. Um, so there's a balance there. Uh, when my husband first got into the business, he didn't call his fear because he was in fear of that happening. So if, if you're out there on Facebook right now or, or on this Zoom call and that is your fear, we're going to get you past that. Um, because there there is that he didn't want to have people say, oh, I don't want to take John's call because he's only going to be asking me about real estate. So we're going to talk about how to be in touch with your sphere so that you're always offering value um, and that, you know, you're mixing it up a little bit. Don't be a secret agent. People, if they don't know that you're in real estate, they're never going to call you to ask about that. And it's painful when you go on Facebook and you see that a very good friend just bought a house with somebody else. So be in touch with your sphere. Um, everyone has to know what you do. Um, if you are not able to, so when we're looking at this graph, that first dot on the first hump, that's the day somebody buys or sells property. Um, and then that next dot down at the bottom, that's the day after. So what we're doing here is we're plotting when, what is the likelihood of people buying and selling their property? And then that next hump between the, the first two humps, that's a, a time period. If you look at that of, as like three to seven years, that's about the average that they're saying right now that people are going to be transacting business again, um, that people buy and sell every, uh, potentially every three to seven years. So you wanna be able to plot people as you're lead generating you're calling and talking to people about their wants and needs for real estate. You're figuring out, you know, how, how long have they been where they are? What's the, you know, when are they, you're trying to gauge when they might be ready to transact again. You want to be able to put them on this graph so that you are offering value in the most appropriate way when you're communicating with them, you're giving them the right kind of information. Um, if you're not able to plot anyone, the trouble is you don't know where to be and you won't be able to be at the right place at the right time when they need you. So mastering your conversations of where people are in their life, what are their life events, um, will give you a better idea of where to plot them so that you can be at the right place at the right time. Um, if you want to feel in control of, of how much money you make, how much commission you make, then one way to look at that is the more people you can put on that line will give you more control. Um, it will give you a bigger sense of what your, um, I call it a pipeline, because I, I always have, but it will give you a sense of what your pipeline is looking like. It will also help you when you're doing that piece of putting your contacts into command. It will help you know how often and at what frequency you need to be reaching back out to them. Um, as somebody is getting closer to back to the top of that, that the, the dots at the top, your frequency is gonna increase in, as to how often you're communicating with them. And it's gonna help you know what kind of information to be communicating to them. Um, does that make sense? Nods? Okay, how many of you are moving in 30 days? Like, that's a question, that's a, you know, that's something that you're gonna wanna be able to plot on there. Um, and you have to stay in touch and be top of mind so that as they're getting closer to that top line, you're able to help them. How do you know that? You know that by the life events that people are experiencing uh, it, to see if they're ready to move. Are they newly married? Are they gonna be getting married? Are they getting divorced? Okay, unfortunately, I'm gonna bring that up again. Are they getting divorced? We've had three calls in the last six months of couples getting divorced. 
Do I want that to happen? No. But if that is happening, I want to be a resource to help them. COVID has not brought out the best in every scenario. And, you know, earlier on, I said, sometimes you're helping people get into a great situation and sometimes you're helping them get out of one. Um, so that is sometimes an uncomfortable conversation, but a necessary conversation. People will bring that up to you if, they're, if their housing needs change, if you are that person that is top of mind, if you're coming from contribution and that you're showing that you care. Um, are they having more kids? Are their kids getting older? Do they have aging parents? Are they going to be empty nesters? Mm. Um, you know, there's lots of little life clues that are going to help along the way. Oh, you have two kids and, and you're going to be having another one next year. How many bedrooms are in your house right now? Plot those life events along that, along that wave line so that you know when they uh, might be getting closer to needing to have a transaction. Susan, good morning. I've been uh, hey, up behind the velvet rope here at Studio 54. I finally got in. Um, anyway, hi. Good morning, hi. everybody. Uh, we do apologize about the, uh, the the Zoom capacity of 100. We'll have that uh, adjusted for tomorrow. That being said, Casey Scheinler uh, put in the chat about um, one of her mentors mentioned, uh, you know, keeping your eye out for, for dumpsters in the yard. Mm -hmm. They're either, yes. they're either, you know, they're either culling stuff to get ready to move. Maybe they're just doing it because they're trying to create more space. And maybe the more space they need is actual square footage, not just getting rid of some, some belongings. And then above and beyond that, um, you know, maybe even some people to your point are, 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 are actually having worked onto the house uh, to create the addition. Um, and, and, and above either way, it's a conversation starter, you know, uh, to your point about having enough conversations to, to up the frequency of people that you're talking to. If you picture all the conversations you're having, if you have that big, that, that wheel of fate and you're spinning the wheel, if there's only four or five names on that wheel, the yeah. probability that it's going to keep hitting the same name and they're in the third or fourth year, not the fifth or seventh year. We know the national average to your early point is every three to seven years and the life changes that are taking place. Now we talked about this this morning at our market center on the quick start is there are people sitting there in their living room staring out the deck and they think they don't like the deck. They don't like de the deck and their husband, Ted, right? Like this is unfortunately <laughs> yeah. bringing out the worst in some it people's is. relationships or just, or just maybe exacerbating what was already going horribly wrong because there is close confines and, and, and people are um, you know, making changes because it's always a life change. It's employment, uh, to your point, right sizing. If they are, you know, a, we have a lot of new agents and they're like, well, none of my friends are buying a house right now, Timmy. I appreciate that. You just finished at UNH. You just finished at UConn. Are you and your classmates the last bird to leave the nest? Are your classmates' parents about to right size? You know, and, and we we say right size because downsize sounds sounds awkward. Some some parents want downsize <laughs> yeah. though because they want less to clean. They don't want a lawn to mow. Uh, it's just about having the 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 conversations. And and Susan made a great point. It's like looking at those hash marks. That is the analogy that. Um, that we use here at the market center because uh, we're in New Hampshire is, are you willing to wait in line to get on the ski lift to take the long, boring ride to the top? Or are you just going to hang out at the top of the hill and wait to go skiing with somebody? Right. And it's the relationships that you're nurturing along the way, waiting in line, taking the long lift to the top. So you can ski down with them. And then you want to yeah. be there again to ski with them again. Um, and having the conversations, the probability that you're going to hit the person on the right day with the right conversation out of the blue uh, is, is, really low if you stay in consistent and constant contact with them and not in a nagging way right the easiest conversation to have right now is just you haven't talked to them in forever right i mean how many people heard well we're waiting till after the holidays today is after the holidays right right we're there talk to your people right yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, you're doing the um, hope and wish method, which is not sustainable, where you're hoping that you're in the right place at the wrong time and you're wishing for success. That's a bad strategy. That's not how we build businesses. We build businesses by helping and caring about people every single day and staying in touch with them. Um, because otherwise you are, you are you're going to go on Facebook and see that somebody that you should have gotten is working with someone else. And that is so unfair to them because you probably could have done a better job. Yeah. Uh, Deborah Kenny made the point to work of saying with that me. she's Deborah Kenny uh, in the chat said that she stopped at a yard sale and had a conversation with a homeowner. They weren't moving, but she, uh, she ended up making 40 million, uh, 40 million. That'd be a good year. She wouldn't be on this <laughs> chat. She'd be on vacation. Uh, 40,000 in commissions um, through referrals she got from that individual. 
That's yeah. fantastic. And then James Fortier said, maybe the parents want to kick the kids out, right? The kids have moved yeah, home because times are tough. <laughs> but the, um, dad's willing to pay for the condo to get Jimmy out, right? Yep. Who knows? Yep. And we're not going to find out if we don't ask the questions. If we don't yeah. ask. Right. You have to ask. And the challenge is how do I, how do I stay in touch? You stay in touch by knowing your people and knowing, you know, where on their life journey are they? And just come from curiosity on that. The conversation will, if you can direct it towards real estate, but if you open it up, um, people want to tell you about themselves. People like talking about themselves and then back it up with a plan and command to continuously stay in touch with them. All right, don't fear your sphere. So here's the um, that Ford script that we talked about. I love this because it takes all of the guessing off the table. If you're, you know, you might be nervous about calling people, this will help you get over those humps until you're not. Um, remember before you're starting your calls, you're telling yourself, you're reminding yourself, I am calling to help people. I love lead generation. I love finding people that I can help. I come from contribution and I have a lot of value to offer and I need to find someone today that needs value. And that's your goal. Um, so the Ford script gives you, you know, four ways that you can be leading a conversation that will help open things up. And this is, it's called a script, but it's really just you being you and helping you lead the conversation. Uh, family, you know, do they have small children? Do they have adult children? Um, there's lots, that, lots of places that you can go right now with, you know, people remote learning and people working from home. Um, you know, maybe their job is never going to go back to an office. It might open up, hey, have you thought about ever wanting to live in the lakes region? Have you ever wanted to live by the beach? Um, you might have that option now, now that you've been remote working. And that brings you right down to occupation. Um, you know, how is that remote working going? Are you gonna have to go back to an office? What does that look like? If you do have to go back to an office, is it gonna be full-time? Is it gonna be part-time? Do you prefer working from home? Is there an opportunity that when this is all over that you're always gonna work from home? Do you have a home office set up? How does that, what does that look like? Where does everyone sit? Um, and of course the conversation's gonna go to other places while you're, while you're having that conversation, like lunchtime is hectic or <laughs> it can get really noisy or I have to really focus on my hardest part of my day in the morning while the kids are still doing this. Um, the point is, is that you're having a conversation, you're planting seeds. Um, you can let them know what you're seeing from other people in regards to those areas. Yeah, you know what? I'm talking to a lot of people that are now looking to maybe having to have an extra bedroom that they never thought that they were going to be needing or, um, you know, find a way to bring value and, and help them even if it's if they're not ready to transact. What is happening in their life at home around their family that you could add value to? because you always want to, them to be getting off the phone going, that was great to hear from Susan. And she really cares about me. Um, maybe follow that up with your handwritten note. Great chatting with you. Hope everything goes well around, um, you know, finals for the kids this, at the end of January, whatever it, whatever it might be. Hey, Susan. Hi, Donna. Hi, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm really well, thank you. Um, I just wanted to add to what you were saying. Um, so I joined Keller Williams around the end of September um, and things were looking up for mm -hmm. COVID going down at that point. And then the fall kicked in. So I did a lot of the Ford calls. Um, I have a pretty big network. Um, Thankfully, I've been on this earth quite a long time. Um, so I reached out to people and to give some of the younger folks some encouragement, I'm gonna tell you, even people that I hadn't talked to in 10 years, I thought initially when I dialed the phone, they're gonna think, where's she been for 10 years? <laughs> right. You know, why is she calling me? And nobody reacted that way right. nobody so I know. we tell ourselves that it's going to be a problem it's not right. a problem right and and if it is you write that person off that's yeah. all you've got plenty of other fish in the sea as they say 
Yep. And you know, most people, when you call them and you say, Hey, how's your life? I haven't talked to you in a long time. You've come across my mind. How's your life right now? Right. Um, I mean, just to, to really hone in on this, because I think this is the best way for new agents to connect with people. And, you know, everybody I've talked to and, and the fact that I'm new to real estate doesn't come up until the very end of the conversation. Yeah. And by then it's very, oh, by the way, it's not, you know, oh, by the way, did you know, um, I went to real estate school and I joined a firm and it, you're upbeat about it. Yeah. Um, and I have really actually enjoy doing it, which, you know, is great. And it's easy. After Good for you. you. Know, like, yeah. After you make five of them, it's easy. Yep. Absolutely. Good for you. Thank you for sharing that, um, for sharing that, because it is true. And when you're making those calls, you know, bring the real estate piece into it. You never know how you're going to be able to help someone when you're going to. That's the piece where you're reminding them that you're in real estate. You're not shoving real estate down their throat. You're not, oh, you're not interested in buying or selling right now. I'll talk to you later. Bye. You are really engaged in them. You really do want to know. And you just want to remind them that you're there. Um, I, you know, before you make those calls, it's, it's important to say out loud to yourself, people want to talk to me and I come from abundance. Mine is that I, I help people make great decisions. So do I sell real estate? I, I do. I sell real estate. But really what I do, Donna, is I help people make great decisions. How can I help you make a great decision today? And I, I say that to people, but I believe it. So it's like being a chiropractor. You know, chiropractors, do they adjust people's backs? Absolutely. But if they can't go out and find people that have back problems, they don't have a back to crack. So a chiropractor really is looking for people that need help with their back or with their neck or, or wherever they're helping them. That's what they're really doing. What we're really doing is we're helping people make great decisions. We're helping bring value to them. And in something that may be the biggest transaction of their life, we're helping them get through that with ease. We're keeping the most money on the table for them. We're helping them through a really big transaction. We help them. We bring value to their lives. And that's what I do every day is I look for people to help. Who's the person that I'm going to help today? And I say it to myself because I believe it. And when I make that call, that's what I want them to hear. I want them to hear that I care about them. Right. You can, can do I that make, too. Can I make one more point on that? Yeah. I, okay. So one of the things that I've thrown into my my little pitch or whatever I want to call it is at the end when I am telling them that I in a new career and I joined Keller Williams. And if somebody says, Oh, you know, I'm not looking to move right now, I just say, Okay, well, keep me in mind if you know anybody in your sphere of influence or however you want to put it. Keep me in mind, would you? And if you feel like it, if you'd like to recommend me, I'd really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, when, um, when, you're, when you are asking for referrals or when, you know, you start focusing on the referral side, I love it if they can give me the name and contact as opposed to giving my name and contact. It puts a little bit more control back in, in, in the driver's seat. And I love control. So, you know, I always like to try to be that person that, that puts myself out there. But if you're showing the person that's going to, the person that will give you a referral and they are out there, you have referrals coming your way. The more value you're showing to them in their life today will build the confidence in them sending referrals to you in the future. Um, and, and that is how that works. That, that is truly how that works. Um, you know, another great area to ask about is recreation, which is fantastic right now. What an awesome conversation. What are you doing for recreation? That's a challenge for people. Um, so ask them how they're doing with that. Encourage them that, you know, the fun piece of life is still super important, even though we might have some stressful times. What are you and your family doing for fun? 
Um, have you, are you doing more staycation stuff than you are? I know you used to travel a lot. Now, you know, what are you doing to have fun with your family at home? Um, what does that look like for you? Have you ever thought about a second home? I mean, a lot of people now are getting second homes. A lot of people have second homes that are now becoming their primary homes. Do you have a secondary home that have you considered that? So there's a lot of funneling questions that you can ask around all of these areas in the Ford script that you can funnel it to, uh, to real estate without being so like, are you gonna buy this year? It's more funneling it to, have you thought about a second home? What would that look like? Are any of your friends and families talking about that? That seems to be a conversation that's coming up a lot lately. And mm. you're opening it up. You're funneling them into an area that you want to help them with. <coughs> and then dreams. The, Hi, go ahead. I, I just, I, I think this particular model, the Ford model, is we, we don't know it, but when we're talking to people and we say, how's your family or how's everything going in your world, they're going to, they're going to marry you. And they're going to say, oh, good, the kids are busy. And how are you? And same thing when you go, how is your work going? Is it crazy? Are you working from home? They're going to say yes or no, and it's crazy or whatever. And they're definitely going to say, how are you? How? Everybody mirrors. That's a, yeah. just a, a thing that people do. And this particular thing guides you into that conversation when they're always, you, when the minute you say you're in real estate, they're going to say, what's the, oh my God, what's the market? Everybody wants to know about real estate and that's what your this this model, this Ford model can slide you right into a very nice, very natural conversation. Yeah. And um, I, you know that you'll notice that as you do one or two calls, you will be it's it's like clockwork. They will mirror your questions. Yes. Absolutely. That's a that's a great point. Thanks for bringing that up because they do mirror that. Um, so give them something positive to mirror. <laughs> When you're on yeah. the phone with them, I hope you're smiling. I hope you're happy. I hope you're like excited that somebody picked up on the other end of the line because they're going to hear that in your voice. If you're scared, they're going to hear that too. So <laughs> if you need to pick a couple of really warm people, call your mom or whoever. Call me. I'll talk to you. You know, pick a warm person to get you going if, if that's something that you need until this becomes more organic for you. Um, because you'll notice that these are not real estate conversations. They're, they're about people's lives and it should be warm. It should be happy. It should be exciting. Um, and I, I hope that it works for you. Let us know, you know, your, your goal is an appointment within the next two weeks. Yep. This is your script. Um, so let us know how you do with that. Let us know which one you like the best. Is it, or is family working for you more than recreation and dreams? Maybe it's a mixture because one of these buttons is going to hit a, a person and your next call, it could be a different one of these that hits the next person. So, you know, just keep going down them and, and then make notes in your in command so that when you're following up with them, you remember where you left off. People love that. They want to know that you remembered them. If they're talking about, um, you know, dreams find a way to send them something that related to their dreams. That is a great way to build your relationship. Go out of your way, put a note in command. When you're doing your lead follow-up, if they mention they have a dream to learn how to ski this year, then you better go find some ski resorts that are offering some specials and just send it to them. If they never use it, who cares? What they're going to remember is that you tried to help them. What they're going to remember is that you heard what their dreams were. Um, it could be that they're saying, you know what, in the spring, I can't wait to get my garden in because that's my therapy for me. That's my recreation. Then you best have a reminder that when spring comes around, you're sending them something re related to gardening, whether it's seeds, whether it's a tool, whether it's a plant from the greenhouse, whether you're calling to ask them, how did the, how's the garden going? You, you need to be invested in the relationship. Hey, Susan. Hi. Hi, um, I just wanted to, to let everybody know that when they're first starting to do these phone calls, that it's definitely going to feel uncomfortable. And you had directed them if they felt more comfortable making warmer calls to their mother, their father, their spouse, whatever. Uh, when I started in real estate in 2012 and I took my first Ignite class um, and I had to make day one, I had to make the phone calls. I thought, all right, I'm going to do a really warm call. I'm going to call my mother. Now, everybody's 
pretty much safe with their mother. Their mother's going to support them. I went through my script and I felt so good about it. And what did my mother do? She laughed at me. Mom. <laughs> she did. She laughed at me. She said, I laughed at you because I wanted you to um, grow from that. I'm like, uh, okay, mom. <laughs> the fact of the matter was that she laughed at me, um, but I did grow from that. Well, she wasn't maliciously laughing right. at me. She was, you know, playing along. Yeah. And it was funny. And and, and nothing it, bad happened. So, and so no. Happened. And I picked right. up the phone and I did it again. But what I did learn is having, instead of looking at scripts as scripts, I look at them as dialogues. I'm having a dialogue with somebody. That's it. I, I may love that word. I may forget my, you know, my train may derail. I may forget my sentence, whatever stuff is going to happen. And that's okay. That's okay. I love that. That is so true. Um, they are just, they are just dialogues and you just got to get over the hump. If you don't want to call people, get over it. People pick up the phone and call people. You have to be able to have conversations in this business because it's not just going to be with your sphere you're now going to be, you know, after we're working on growing our business and we're running our business, you're going to have to have a lot of conversations with your vendors, with co-brokes, with clients on the other side, with lenders, with title companies, like conversations and being able to verbally communicate is going to make you a better real estate agent. You're going to need to, this is a very fast moving business. You're going to get answers and solve problems more quickly when you can pick up the phone and stop waiting for emails, stop sending a Facebook message and hoping that they get back to you. The hope and pray is not a business strategy, people. You have to be able to move, uh, you know, move things down the track. Um, hey, Susan, really quick. script is great for that. Hi, Melissa. Hi. Um, so I put a thing in the chat, but just speaking of your mom, um, my first few listing presentations I did with my mom, my sister on their house. Just, and I went in like, you know, they're strangers. They obviously aren't selling their house, but I, it's also a good way to get practice because you get that first listing appointment and then you're like, now oh, no. <laughs> I'm not ready for this. So, it, you know, you're reach out to your family, friends. I mean, it's a good way to practice that listing presentation too. Absolutely. Great idea. Great idea, Melissa. Um, so yeah, please. The whole point of this slide is don't fear your sphere. Uh, this is where your your first pieces of business should be coming from. You have a stronger likelihood of your first pieces of business coming from your sphere than from starting cold. And we are going to, so does anyone need a, a break? Or do you want me to keep going? Like five minutes? You, you know, want to take, take a five time. minute break and we can refresh get some caffeine if you need it so it is half past right now it's 10 30 i'll see y'all at 10 35. all right cool
çok. Neyse. Okay, it's about that time. So we're going to jump back into it. And Susan, I'm going to hijack Hi. for three seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Just real quick to remind everybody, um, uh, this time around we are, uh, and I mean for this, this, this January run of Ignite 2.0, we're going to be available to you guys at 12 o'clock too. So where your instructors like Susan might have to go and get on with her life because she's a wildly successful real estate agent. It's just to babysit her husband and make sure he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, which I trust John's probably on the phone, right? I was yeah, going to say, he probably it. on the phone, I bet you he's standing and he's looking into a mirror, not to check his <laughs> hair, but to watch his facial expression, right? Yeah. So that being said, we are going to be available to you guys at noon every day, just to mirror and match what they've been doing with, um, with Bold is having that coach's corner availability every day for about 15 minutes. So if there's anything we don't get to today in the interest of getting through the material, we're available for questions after the fact. So, I mean, myself, Aaron McLaughlin, Deb Hayes, Lorna, Heidi. I see a lot of our uh, regional coaches that are online today. So please stick around at 12 if you do have questions that we can get answered for you as you get on with your day to get your lead generation done so you can be wildly successful. Awesome. Thanks, Susan. Yeah, you bet. Fantastic. Um, and before we jump off of this Ford script page, I just want to remind you of the, the slide that we were on before of the wave and the importance of being able to track people and put them on that wave, um, you know, and, and, and identifying those people that are starting to climb up and get closer to being at the top of being able to ready to transact again. You should be able to put five to seven people on that 
those should be your first calls. So when you're working on who am I going to call for my sphere today, um, as you're learning to use command and you're you're putting the appropriate information in there, those should be your first calls when you're setting up your day, when you're hearing anything about um, any possibility that there might be somebody that is, you know, moving towards that direction, um, then bump them to the top of your call list. Okay. The next section that we're going to tackle is know the tools. So that, you know, command is definitely a, a strong tool for you guys to be using. Um, it's, you know, just like you have your iPhone and you have apps on your iPhone that you use daily. Like we, all, we all use it probably more than what we should. Um, command acts that way on your behalf as well. Um, we're gonna bust through a couple of these tool, these slides. Uh, I'm not overly familiar with Keller Mortgage, so I'm not gonna be able to speak to you about that. I wanna just remind you guys, you all have you know, fantastic productivity coaches. If you need more information on that, then, then go to them. They'll be able to point you in the right direction. Um, we're gonna bump to command. Uh, this is a tool that you guys have. You should have a tech director in your market center. Um, there are people in your market center that can directly help you with getting going on command. And just like anything else, if you want to be good at it, you have to dedicate some time to it. So as you guys are crafting what your calendars are going to look like, and your calendar should be on purpose about your business, otherwise your day will get ahead of you and it will get away from you. And at the end of the day, you're gonna be going, I didn't really accomplish anything today. I didn't talk to anybody about real estate. I didn't set any appointments. I didn't put anybody in command. I got, got nothing done. Don't be that person. If you control your calendar, then you'll have a stronger likelihood of reaching your goals, of adding 10 new contacts, of setting, sending out 10 handwritten notes, of getting an appointment within the next two weeks, practicing your contracts. So put in your calendar that you're gonna spend some time on command and learn it. Um, help this tool work for you. And just like your iPhone, command has apps for you to use. So, um, you know, it has an app to make your life better. How do you keep track of your people? You have an app for that, it's called Contacts. So put them in there as a contact and set them up on some kind of plan. You know, how do I make flyers for my business? This, this is what you need to make your business happen. How do I, how do I come up with marketing material? Command has an app for that. It's called designs. There's people that can help you learn how to use designs. Um, how do I, when I do have a transaction, how am I going to transact that? How am I going to keep track of everything? You have an app for that. It's called opportunities. Um, how do I run ads on Facebook? You have an ad for that. It's called campaigns. So I would encourage you all to calendar, putting time into your calendar to learn command, but start with the basics. Start with contacts, master contacts. Contacts, you know, coming from, uh, I'm, anything I teach is gonna have a flair of production because I'm not a productivity coach. I'm, I'm an agent that still has to bring home the bacon and fry it up in a pan and make money for my family. So I'm coming from production. Learn your contacts first. Um, I would encourage you that too, that, you know, command is very big. There's a lot to learn. Don't spend all your time learning command and not, do your business, which your business is reaching and talking to people about buying, selling, investing in real estate. This should be done after the 30 minutes of entering contacts, after the 30 minutes of, um, after the 60 minutes of lead generation time, after following up on your leads, after writing your handwritten notes. This is the stuff that goes on in the afternoon after you've done all of those other pieces. Otherwise you fall into the trap of getting ready to get ready, spending all of your time getting ready to get ready, building your website, doing marketing material. If you are doing that, you're running your business. Right now, our focus is growing our business. So calendar some time to learn command, but remember and, and put something visual up to remind yourself that my job is to grow my business. If I don't find people to talk to about real estate, you're not going to have to worry about having a swanky flyer. 
So contacts will help you with the grow your business part. Um, when you are putting your stuff into command, you're in such a beautiful, sweet spot right now. You enter in good information. Garbage in, garbage out. Good info in, good info out. So as you're putting people into command, you're putting your contacts in, put in the right information. Have, um, you know, have an intake sheet so that when you are talking to people, when you hang up, you know you've gotten all their pertinent information. You have the, you know, their name spelled correctly. You have their phone number. You have their spouse information if that's appropriate. You have their address. You know how to find them on Facebook. Um, you can put all of that good information in there so that your database stays very pure, very clean, so that when you're setting them up on activities, it's going to be relevant to them and you're going to be, it's going to be easier for you to add value. A lot of people refer to their database as their data bank. And that's because it really, it's a great way to look at your database. It really is your, your finances and your income really can all get honed down into one thing and that's your database or your data bank. Um, so make it a good one. Are you guys using command yet or is that still new or? Yes. Yeah, use it. Don't. You have to have a system for keeping in touch with people because it really will get away from you um, if you don't. You, one, you know, there's great tools within command. There's the question mark that, you know, if you're not sure where to go, click on the question mark. It will help guide you. Um, you have a tech trainer. You have your um, Market Center's Facebook page. I would say, you know, when you're calendaring in time to learn it, learn it. But if you get stuck on something, don't stay there long. Just ask for help because you, you are, you've joined such a wonderful company of people that wanna help you. Um, so do what you can on your own and, and when you need help, ask for it. Okay. And you have that wave. So when you're working your working command, get those people, add them from your wave into command work on the daily habits that you're doing of adding contacts every day, you're talking on the phone, you're meeting new people, you're, you're getting their info. And when you have that lead follow-up time, command is your friend. Um, and start with your sphere. So if you're you know, in the afternoon after you've done making some calls, if you're not sure where to go, take out a notebook and a pen and start writing down your sphere. Go through your social media contacts. That's your sphere. They can be added into your database. Sue, I got a question. Hi, how are Hi. you? I'm doing good, how are you? Great, thanks. So talking about keeping a good database, if you, um, I recently ran my first uh, Facebook kind of lead ad looking to uh, track buyers. And so I'm getting a lot of leads from that, but I've obviously some of them have fake emails, some of them have fake numbers. So I'm not keeping those, but what do you do if you've got somebody that the number's real, the email's real, but they weren't very receptive to your phone call, but they also didn't say, don't contact me again. Um, do you keep that in your database or do you kind of write them off? No, nope, I do. I, you know, you have to really be a deadbeat to get out of my database. Not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> so unless it's Donald Duck, you're probably going in mine. Um, I would say put them in. Um, you know, you can organize your command and your database so that you can rate people. Um, ha have your tech director go through some options on tags or whatever it is that you want to do for that. Um, sometimes the address is like the last one you get or, or, or something. They might say they're not ready to talk to you. This is the thing about your database. The phone number is for me the most important because you can text them, you can call them. They're not always going to respond to you, but if you're always providing value, they're going to respond to you when they need something. Um, and we see it all the time in our business where we're not going to get a response from people and that's okay. The most important thing is that you're at, you're adding value. You're not texting them. Hey, you in the market to buy something? Hey, are you looking to move? You're, you're offering value. You know, October comes around. You should be offering. It's time to change your smoke detector batteries. Hey, it's the new year. Uh, remind them of something that's important or, you know, holidays are coming up, set up just a text to go out. 
um, maintenance issues come around, to, you might have a great maintenance tip. Find a way to reach out to them with value. It can be quick. It can be short. It can be sweet. You're reminding them that you're in the business. You're providing value. When they're ready, they'll call you, even when you think they won't. Thank you. Yeah. And remind them too, you know, you can be reminding them, hey, I, we talked about open houses in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. There's four of them this weekend. Let me know if you want more information or, you know, something. Susan, so I just want to uh, piggyback off that too. So Frank, um, I don't know if you've heard of Jessica Starr. She's in our region and it's S-T-A-R-R. -R. Um, look her up because she is absolutely hands down amazing at her scripts. And it's because she does script practice every day and still to this day, even though she's so amazing at it. Um, so something she talks about these leads because she does this Facebook ads a lot. You might have seen her with Nick Baldwin. Um, so here, here's like an example. So if a buyer clicked on one of her ads and they said, oh, I'm really just not interested. She's like, oh, great. So what was it? Was it the kitchen that made you uh, click on that, that link? Was it that like green kitchen that you saw that was really interesting to you? Because I really thought that was interesting too. So she's just trying to engage with them. And they say, yeah, you know what? It was that kitchen is cool, da, 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 but I'm really not looking right now. She's like, great, here's the thing. I would love to have you as my feedback person on these ads because you know what? One of the things is if these ads are great or if they're not good, I'd like to know. So would you, would you be able to let me know if you like these ads or not? So she just puts a different spin on the conversation she has and has a great dialogue with the scripts that she already provides. So definitely look her up. And here's the key point to what I just said. Scripts, 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 practice <laughs> yes. your scripts. Absolutely. Thank you. Always comes back to the scripts, you know. Okay, so we, so database, um, data bank, database command, um, super important. You know, there's a before command and, uh, you know, maybe aging myself a little bit, but it, for a long time, agents weren't using a database and their business was haphazard. The importance of a database is it, it helps you to be able to predict more of your pipeline. It helps you to more effectively work your pipeline. Um, it helps you with, uh, you know, who you're supposed to follow up with, what frequency am I going to be following up with them, and, and with what intensity. So that, that sphere that's how you use your database to determine, you know, who you're going to be following up with next. How often am I going to be following up with them, and with what frequency? Um, and and command is, is a fantastic tool for that. So if you need help, find your resources within your market center. You know, they really do want to help you. Okay. We are going to go on to oops. Okay. These are your also your Ignite toolkits. So you have a resource job aid, you have the script books, the buyer lead sheet. So as you're using these forms, you know, the ones that we really use a lot are definitely the an intake form. So when you are speaking with people, you might, it's possible that you're going to get caught up in just having the conversation. That form, whether it's electronic or, you know, I'm old, so I like just the pen and paper version, have some type of intake to remind you to get all of the information that you need from them while you're on the phone with them, you know, all of their contact info, spouse info, that type of thing, so that you can um, enter that into command when you're, when you're done. Um, the 411, which uh, if you're setting up times with your coaches, you're going to be hearing more about that. Um, plan your day checklist. You really need a checklist, folks. Uh, if you don't have a checklist and you don't have a system for what you're going to do, you will get to the end of the day going, I didn't do anything. I didn't actually produce anything, but I have great flyers, but I have a website. It, you know, have a checklist so that the most important things get done first, your contacts, you're talking to people about real estate, your lead generation, your setting appointments. Um, it's super important. You know what's really empowering? Do your checklist the night before so that when you come into the office, you're ready to start that, ne that next day like with power, with intensity, with purpose. Um, there's also a tool for preview previewing homes. Previewing homes is really important. 
you know, find ways to get into houses. It might be a little bit more challenging right now with COVID, but it's just a challenge. Doesn't mean that you can't get in one. Um, inspections really are a fantastic way for previewing homes. Um, the pre-listing questionnaire, the pre-listing packet, and then open house tools. So those are all tools within your Ignite toolkit and these will all be touched on more as we move through Spark and we get into elements. I did put a checklist for buyers in the chat section, Susan. Uh, this is something that you could do, you could use right in command. It's absolutely amazing. You don't have to guess, you don't have to do the extra work for it. There's other resources, as Susan said, on our Facebook uh, group. So make sure you're, you're getting into that. I know I've said it a couple of times, so I'm gonna keep saying it. Yeah. Get into our Facebook group and check out the units. Erin McLaughlin has done a fabulous job making sure all of the information is there for you and uh, available for when you need it. And uh, yeah, it's all, all, everybody who's in that group gets access to it. It's pretty awesome. And, and this is not normal. Other brokerages folks don't do this. We are so lucky to be part of Keller Williams because we share with other agents. You're not going to find this in other places. And, you know, even as you're talking to folks on the Ford script and they start asking you about your job, get excited about that. That's really a great bragging point because they're not only bringing you to the table, they're bringing everybody else that is sharing and caring and providing you with, with technology and with coaching and training. So let's prepare for success because I know that all of you are gonna be successful in 2021. Um, there's a lot of folks out there that need our help. Um, so, Spark is really the learning modules. Um, it's fuel your career, which is today, and which I, I'm so happy that you guys are here. This is a career. This is not a haphazard job. A lot of folks will approach you like, oh, you got your license. You must be making a ton of money. Um, it's a myth that as soon as you get your license, the business just starts flowing. It's just people start calling you, wanting to help you. It's a job. It's a career. You have to work at it. Um, so own your business, decide what you wanna do. You can, the sky is the limit. You can do whatever you want. Um, to, if you want more, then make more calls, make more contacts, help more people, find more people to help. Um, be more human more often with more people and you'll get more business. Um, and that's really what Fuel Your Career is all about. Um, lead generation so tomorrow don't don't miss tomorrow the lead generation is the core of your business we keep talking about it um, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the business lead generation is always the priority whether you're you're brand new or you've been doing this for 20 years you should always be lead generating um, it will provide you an overview of the lead generation model um, and it will cover how to lead generate and why lead generate generation is so important so that's tomorrow um, after that, there is powerful language gets results. What you say matters. And that's why you script. Um, that's why you're on purpose. It's what you say to yourself that matters and what you say to other people that matters. If you don't believe it yourself, you're not going to be authentic and transparent when you communicate with other folks about buying and selling and investing in real estate. Um, so be mindful of your language when you're talking with people and when you're talking to yourself. Um, and then there will be uh, your database is your business and set goals that matter. Remember, our goal right now is an, a, one appointment within the first two weeks. And if you can get more than one, it's only going to help your business. So if you get one quickly, then go after getting the second one and the third one and then just letting it snowball from there. Uh, a great session for Spark is going to be delivering your value proposition, proposition, developing it and delivering it and having it roll off your tongue um, is very important because people are gonna wanna know what sets you apart from other people. And it's not how much business you've done. That's not your value. Your value can be something else and it is going to be something else. So there's a great session on delivering your value proposition. 
So that's a great thing to start thinking about now. Why did you get into this business? What are your goals? How are you going to help people? Remember, we're in the business of helping people make great decisions. We're in the business of helping people. It's not always about the real estate transaction. And then of course, finding seller leads. So that's gonna be a great session um, on how to you know, put a lot of these pieces together and find seller leads. And then a day in the life of a real estate agent. Remember your calendar is very important. Um, and it might look a lot different for folks that are new. It might look a lot different than what you thought it was going to look like. So this is a great course in general, but the day in the life of a real estate agent will help you with a path to success. Um, and then a market specific center specific module. And that is the first section of Ignite, which is Spark. And then you'll roll into um, Elements, which is so fun. Uh, there's prospecting. So you're going to talk about, um, you know, how are you going to find new business? You're going to be using your daily success habits. Um, and then you're going to roll into marketing, which is, of course, super important. But remember, you can't market if you don't have any people to market to. So um, the prospecting and lead generation part comes first, but you will jump in and have some, um, some training on marketing. Um, and then open houses, fantastic way to get experience previewing homes, talking to people, using scripts that you've learned, finding unsigned buyers, um, so work with your market center, work with your productivity coaches on, um, on how to be able to host open houses. So there'll be a, a module on the importance of open houses and how to do them, but your, your market center and your coaches can help you with actually being able to host open houses. Um, if you can't host them, ask to co-host, uh, so that you can be a part of it and learn. And then there will be a session on seller appointments and buyer consultations. Those are really powerful sessions um, make, you know, that, that you're not gonna wanna miss. There, there's lots of great information in there. And then I will be back with you guys for making and receiving offers, one of my favorites. I love that session. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun. We're gonna talk about co-brokes uh, relationships and stuff like that. Um, and then negotiating the deal. You know. We have to be able to negotiate. Part of scripting is to work with your clients, but you're also going to be working with other um, agents for, for negotiating deals and putting deals together, um, having win-win relationships with uh, both sides. You know, negotiating the deal isn't about I get everything over for my client over what you're getting for your client. And you'll really talk about that on negotiating the deal. Um, Financial basics, fantastic course. You can, you know, there's so many agents that have had fantastic GCI. And if you're not doing the right things with your money, then you're doing a lot of work for no reward. So watch your money. It's important to know what you're spending your dollars on. Guess what? The easiest people to sell to are salespeople. We're salespeople. You're gonna be getting phone calls to buy this subscription, buy this subscription pay for this, pay for that. It, it can be a rabbit hole and watching your money is very important. So you're so lucky that they put financial basics into this course. Um, and then contract to close, my favorite, I'll be back for that one too. Um, super fun, you know, that's the fun part of the business for me. But again, you gotta grow your business in order to get to the contract to close part. Um, but we will talk about that and how important contract to close is because now, you know, you're getting that person on the wave at the bottom. And now we're going to stay in touch with them until they're back at the top. Because relationship is the first is the most important. We're going to stay in relationship with them after they close. And we're going to stay in touch with them and offer value all the way until they're ready to go again in three to seven years. Very important. And, and then again, in a market specific center specific module, I have to admit, I have no idea what that's going to look like. So you have a surprise. So that's what the rest of your 
next several weeks are going to be looking like. <laughs> um, make the most out of Spark, open houses. I don't know why this wasn't in, oh yeah, it was. Um, let me see if I missed a slide here. Yeah, there we go. Um, the daily 10-4. So we're going to talk about, you know, the habits when we way back when we had that slide with all the spirals that then brought us over to transacting. It's the habits, the growing and managing your database, um, prospecting, following up and knowing your money, knowing your your market. Um, the daily 10 for every day is about making sure that you're hitting um, hitting those goals. Um, so Susan, can I just chime in really quickly on this? Of course. The, uh, if we have 97 people on here, I think over a hundred people on Facebook, guys, write this down. This is the most important piece <laughs> of Ignite. Yep. If you didn't get anything out of the golden nuggets that Susan has been laying out for you today, this is the golden nugget of the day. If you master this one thing, this one thing daily, which is these four habits, adding context to your database, speaking to 10 people a day in your database, writing note cards, 10 a day, and knowing your market. If you remember those four things, you are going to win at this real estate business career. I yeah. promise you, if you just master this, you've won. Yep. Now, a lot of people don't hear that right. They think it's just something that they do while they're in Ignite and then they forget about it or they say, you know what, I'll do one day of this mm -mm. and then forget it. I am, I promise you, anybody, will anybody commit to doing this daily, by the way? Any hands up of anyone that's going to commit to doing a daily 10 for daily? Definitely. What that is, is yes. adding 10 contacts to your database, speaking to 10 people, writing 10 note cards and knowing your market. I got a one yes. Okay. All right. Good. Just one. Guys, listen, this, is, this is the key to Ignite right here. Yeah. And it's not just Ignite. This is what we do every day. After six years with a license, this is still the priority every single day. And that is why, you know, having your calendar set so that you're doing the most important things first. The most important thing is 10, 10 contacts. If you don't find the people to transact and do business with, you're never going to run your business. What if I do less than 10? You won't be you won't be as successful. Your business will grow more slowly. The number is 10. Um, so growing and managing your database, it starts with 10 new contacts a day. Where are you going to find them if you don't have your sphere? We did talk about that. Um, if you have to find strangers, if you have to go to the coffee shop, there are still places that are open. You have to find 10 new contacts. If you're on the phone with someone, ask who, who they know that you might be able to talk to. This piece never goes away. Um, successful agents master this and they do it constantly. It's infinite. This is the infinite side of your business that never goes away. Speak with 10 people in your database, which is very different than the add new 10, 10 new contacts. Um, one thing that's important, no matter how many years you've been in the business is you want to be constantly adding new people in and you wanna be taking care of the people that are already in there. Um, the 10 note cards, write 10 notes to people that you recently contacted. People love this. Um, it's, it's easy. You have them set out, set out 10 before you even start making your calls so that you know those are there. Some people do other visual tricks to make sure they're getting to the 10. You can have, um, you know, an empty one of these with 10, with an empty one and then one with 10 pens in it. As soon as you make a contact, put it over the next one. If there's a visual game that will help make this more interactive for you, um, then do it. But it, it is a daily habit that will give you success. Um, the importance of this is that, you know, you're doing this with new folks because you don't want to be practicing on your first client. Um, you want to be nailing this. You want to be talking to new people. You've already done your scripts. So you know how to speak to them. Um, you're communicating with them regularly by putting them in your database. You're writing the 10 notes. It really, it, a handwritten note, in my opinion, is the best. There may be folks in your world that a Facebook message might be better. 
um, or Instagram or an email, but it's not the same. An email is not the same as a handwritten note. It doesn't have to have a ton of content in it as far as value. Um, nobody wants to get like a, a big, huge piece of information, but knowing that you care goes a long way. Um, and then the preview 10 homes a week. So if that is, if you're having a challenge with finding the 10 homes, please go to your coaches. Um, I know some market centers are doing like virtual um, broker tours. As a new agent, I would, I would hop on those. Um, there are still open houses happening. There are, you know, if somebody, if somebody in your market center is taking a new listing, they're going to have to go visit the house and do like their um, MLS codes and stuff like that. You can offer to help um, do stuff like that or offer to tag along, ask someone if, if it would be possible to tag along. But previewing the homes will help, help it so that you're not practicing on your clients when you're able to, you know, get your listing appointment. Um, it will also help you with, you know, previewing homes too. It's like, you know, you're not used to going into homes. So, you know, where do people put the lock boxes? How do I use a lock box? What do I do with the key when I get the lock box? Don't put it in your pocket, put it the same place every time. Generally back in the lock box is the best place to go um, so that you're not putting that key in your pocket and moving on to an, another showing. So previewing the homes lets you practice without practicing on an actual client when you get to the point where you're shopping with someone. Um, it helps you to learn about houses. So am I in the basement with the furnace and I'm seeing duct work? So maybe there's central AC. If there's no duct work, there probably isn't central AC. I mean, there's a lot of things about a house that you're gonna look at when you're shopping with a buyer that the buyer's not gonna look at. It's their job to look at whether or not they like the, the countertops or the rooms are big enough. It's your job to be looking at a house in terms of, you know, am I seeing signs of leaking uh, moisture in the ceilings? Um, am I down at the furnace and I'm not seeing any tags of previous um, service calls? Or am I seeing a lot of them? Oh, wow, that's great. They've had it serviced every single year. Who's servicing them? My folks are indicating that they might like this house. I might be taking pictures of things that I wanna ask more questions of. I might be writing notes about, um, things that are important to them that I want to make sure I'm including in an offer. Uh, the, the important part here is that I'm not, um, I'm previewing homes so that I'm not going to be practicing on my clients. Um, I'm previewing homes so that I'm knowing when I'm looking at a property, you know, is this property going to be a challenge for different type of lending types? I'm previewing homes so that, oh, look at there's peeling paint. So now if I'm seeing this, looking through photos for a buyer and I see peeling paint, I know that it's gonna be an issue with an FHA or a VA buyer. Um, I'm looking at homes to find out, you know, is this gonna be a septic tank or is this gonna be public water and sewer? So there's a lot of things that you can help become an expert on by previewing homes. Um, get out of your comfort zone. If it feels uncomfortable when you start to be getting the 10 new contacts, then you're doing something right. Um, it will reward you when all of this work comes back to you. And trust me, if you, if you do the work, it will happen. It will happen. Does anyone have any questions on that daily activity? I mean, I, I, I think that Jen is right. This should be written. It should be posted up in your office. Um, you should not be stopping for the day if you haven't made them. So if it's three o'clock and you're, and you're supposed to be done because you have to go to the grocery store, you stay, get the appointment. It could be the next call. The next call could be the one, but the numbers, you know, the math works. They say 10 is the number. Trust in the leadership that put all of this together. When they say 10 is the number, the math works. Okay. Making the most out of Spark. Um, if by noon, well, if by noon you haven't made your contacts, keep going. Our goal is always to do our contacts um, the first half of the day. However, that being said, the you know the appointment is the appointment. If you are finding yourself um, on the phone, a pitfall for calling your sphere is you could end up being on very lengthy conversations with someone that you haven't talked to in a while just to catch up. And if that's running for forty minutes, then it's eating into your ten contacts time. So you you know, you have to find a way to be on purpose about your calls. 
Um, work with your coaches on that. Have the scripts, the forward scripts, open up the conversation. But if you're finding yourself wanting to go on to lengthy, more personal stuff, set an appointment for that. Doesn't count as an appointment. An appointment means about real estate. I mean, set a time in your calendar to say, you know what, this is so great to catch up with you. Why don't we have a Zoom drink at five tomorrow or something like that? Make your 10 contacts be on purpose about real estate. Um, so if you're not getting them, keep dialing, keep going, keep making, reaching out. Um, contact means that you spoke to somebody about real estate. It doesn't mean that that person has to be interested right now, but it does have to be a conversation about real estate and, and use those Ford scripts. Um, one conversation about real estate that, um, that the other, you could be talking about something if the other person isn't realizing that, it's because you're just talking about life. So you're, you're gonna open up the conversation to talk about life. It's gonna lead to real estate and that counts as a contact. Um, I would say now, it's the beginning of January. Now is your time to double down. Um, if you are going to be taking time off during the week, then definitely your day might be doubling down because you're, you know, you might be in the hole for for ten contacts. Um, let me see lead generation. If you're having issues with, um, you know, with figuring out where to do it, again, talk to your coaches. Um, talk to people at the grocery store, talk to, there are still sporting events happening with kids if you're able to do that. If you're able to get onto any community Zoom stuff, check your chamber of commerce. They are doing some, you know, very out of the box community events, participate in them. People are gonna wanna approach you and talk about um, real estate. And it's really a great way to, to get those contacts up and, and trust in the math. Does anybody have any questions on that? Okay. I have um, a question about the appointments. Sure. sure. Um, so how do we do that with COVID? Like people aren't gonna feel comfortable getting together. So well, that is a preconceived notion some people might be. So I'm going to challenge you. There's a lot of ways that you can overcome. And, and it's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, we have technology in, in FaceTiming, in Zoom, or in Google Hangouts. So if somebody is uncomfortable about that, about meeting a face-to-face, -face, then offer to set one of those up. Um, and if you need if you're uncomfortable with using one of those platforms, then I would say find someone in your office to practice and do it 20 times. Just setting up the Zoom, sending out the link, opening it up, letting them in the room, having a presentation up, practice it, practice it, practice it until you are confident in saying, I'm gonna call Susan Kenyon right now. I know she has a house to sell and I'm gonna set up a Zoom meeting with her. Um, another thing that's going to come up is, I know in my area, we have people buying homes that they have never seen and won't see until they close and in some cases after they close. So we are doing showings virtually. We're showing over FaceTime um, and over video platforms. So you can use those. Now, I also just wanna challenge you that not everybody wants to do things virtually. So if there is a safe way for you to have um, an in-person meeting, we are still having folks that want that in-person meeting. They want us in the house to see the house. Let them know that you have a system in place and, and write it down if you need to of how we can safely um, see your house, have that appointment because you're gonna have to show it to people. So you're gonna wanna get, if people have a need to sell their home during COVID, other people are going to have to be in their home most likely to sell that. So you're going to want to walk them through a path of safely being six feet apart, using your mask, wiping things down, whatever that's going to look like, and putting that protocol into place. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Great. making the appointment that way if that's what they want. Gotcha. Thank it's you. It's kind of their love language. What's their love language? What would you like to do? <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Does anybody else have ideas on that 
of how, how you how you would do things in this weird time that we're in? If you come into a roadblock again, ask ask for help. People are out there that want to help you. Okay. Does so we're we are nearing the end. Does anybody have any aha moments or things that might have resonated with you more than others? You know, how has your thinking changed? Ideas or mindset that might have changed? You know, it all starts up here. You have to want it. You have to believe it. I wake up and tell myself things every day. The thing that I'm telling myself the most right now is that I handle everything with a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. I need that for me. I don't, yours might look different. And the reason I say that is that you know, you're working with a lot of, you might be calling people that are very stressed out. They, they might be really grumpy with you. It has nothing to do with you. It may have everything to do with their life situation. You're working with cobrokes, not always easy. So I handle it. I tell myself, I, I handle everything with a sense of humor. It's not personal. You're dealing with lenders who, you know, they might be remote learning kids at home in the background while they're trying to underwrite a loan. I have to work with them with a sense of humor. So Mindset is important. If anyone has an aha, though, feel free to jump in. Um, Susan? Hi. Hi. Um, so um, basically, this whole session has been an aha for me. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I, I, as I said earlier, I started in September and the fall was a little rough going for a lot of different reasons, all on my end, not on anybody's but mine. Um, but this session has kind of like, I don't know, got my moho going to use mojo going. Um, you're very engaging. You're a great coach. Compliments to you. Thank you. You held my attention the entire time. I might have been walking around, but <laughs> I was listening. Good. Um, so thank you. It, the whole thing was aha for me. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I have a few things here. I could say them. Um, the Ford acronym to me is um, makes the scripts feel more authentic. Sort of like it just breaks it down and how we I think we naturally talk to people. So that definitely took a roadblock away from me. And the daily habits, just knowing like just those little few things help me now figure out because I'm, I'm new, I'm brand new at this. So it gives me that guide to sort of know how to at least start. Awesome. Fantastic. But they're kind of how we talk to everybody, whether you're going out to dinner with right. someone. Exactly. So it doesn't feel, it feels authentic that way. Yeah. That's Susan, great. we have a couple in the chat too. Oh, hi. Yeah, hi, great. I Thank finally you. I, got in. <laughs> so good to see you. Thank you for monitoring that because honestly, I have not looked at the looked at the chat. I felt very unpopular, like I was not <laughs> let in the room. Uh, no. Okay. So we have a couple. Um, so what is the message for the thank you note? And this actually came up on the Facebook chat as well. There's a great article that was put out recently on Connect um, about 20. 20 different ways to do a handwritten note. So I will post that in the Facebook group later. Um, but, you know, honestly, you're t I'm thinking like, I always did them, I always still do them as follow ups to conversations, right? So thank yeah. you for taking the time to chat with me today. I look forward to connecting you. I sorry, I missed you. Uh, how are you? I hope this note finds you well, really don't overthink it. Again, mm -hmm. you can use the Ford conversation to guide your handwritten notes. How's the family? How's work? Uh, what have you been doing for fun? Hope we can connect soon. Looking forward yeah. to our meeting next week. It's whatever. Happy New Year right now. Anything. Yeah, Happy New Year. Right? It's that they get something in the mail from you yeah. that shows you care. That's yeah, handwritten. Well, there's something no labels. special about the fact that it was handwritten, right? Yeah. Like it's, it feels different than an email or a text. Yeah. Um, so uh, someone else had put my 10 contacts a day means I spoke to them about real estate, make the calls. I make the calls, but sometimes I hesitate about getting into real estate. Um, so that's someone's aha, which I think is a great one, right? Because yeah, especially when we're new, we sort of just could ramble, right? The conversation might not have a purpose. That's where your scripts are going to come in, like really leaning into them so that you can have a purpose to the conversation. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
where's John? He would say, set the appointment. Set the right? appointment. It's a no unless you ask. Right. It's a no unless you ask. And if it's if it's not right, if it's not the t right time right now, who cares? You asked. Then you put a note in command and you follow. Well, great. When, you know, when is a good time for me to call back? I generally like to follow up every month. If you need me sooner, I'm happy to schedule you for two weeks. Yeah. I mean, well, what's the worst thing that's going to happen, right? So don't tell yourself that story. Yeah. I mean, like tell yourself they want to hear from you. They want to talk to you, right? They're your friends. They're your family. They're yeah. people who are friends with your friends and family. Um, you know, so they have something that they need and you have a skill set that can help them. Um, so, uh, someone else put, let's see, breaking must do tasks into 30 minute or one hour instead of go until it's done is a very helpful mindset shift. Um, that was an aha it takes a lot of weight off. Yeah. That's schedule is a huge yep. piece for that. You know, outthink yourself. If, if sitting until something is done feels like punishment and you're not going to do it, break it into 15 yeah. minute increments if you need to. And you can like celebrate. I did 15 minutes and then do another 15, right? And just keep going. Um, Stand up if you have yeah. to. I mean, it's, it's hard to sit down this long. Yeah. Stand up if you have to. Just keep yeah. going. Uh, don't forget to handwrite your lenders, inspectors, and co-brokes too. That's a great one from Melissa. Um, and then, oh, someone put, I got a 45 minute hour glass timer and that she loves it. Love yeah. that. So if you need that visual, right. I, and I know I liked earlier, you were talking about moving the pens. Um, and Tim always talks about how he would move blocks. Right. So, um, you know, whatever it is, if you want to put a marble in a jar from one jar to the next, whatever it is to give you that visual, to keep you on task and, um, you know, put it into place. Yeah. Um, and make it and make it fun. In our office, we have a bell. So if when someone gets an appointment, they ring the bell. That's awesome. And you know, they you can that they can celebrate without really interrupting. I mean, we hear and if somebody hears the bell go off, we tell them why. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I know the first time I ever did bold, which was super intimidating, right? There's a hundred and something people in a room and they you <laughs> ring the bell. You, we would ring yeah. the bell when we got an appointment during the call setting, you know, the call time. So um, yeah, you want to ring that bell. So yeah. ring a bell if there's a bell. <laughs> ring, ring the bell. Yeah. Ring the bell. I have a question. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm not, uh, it's a question. Um, it's, I don't know, it's something I'm stuck on. And I guess I'm also just wondering if there's anyone else um, that's feeling or, or having this issue. So I, this is my second Ignite. I started with Keller Williams back in October or September and I did the Ignite then. Um, I have been an agent for a few years. I came from another company and the whole thing with COVID has basically just stopped me in my tracks. And I keep like, trying to move forward, putting the steps in place to do this, but I am from coming, like we've been in our bubble, not really leaving our house, trying to be very careful, meeting with people. So meeting with people is, is a, it's, it's a huge fear. Like I'm having a really hard time getting myself to that point. Are there agents that are doing well with Zooming with people, with new clients? And how are you introducing that for people um, or saying that to people instead of like meeting them. Obviously, if you're going to, you know, put someone's home on the market, you have to go to it. Um, but how are you, how are the, how are other agents like going about saying, you know, can we zoom or, or are there ways to do that? Cause I'm really stuck with it in, in kind of finding my way through that right now. Great and question for sure. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm just a firm believer in the, the being direct. If, you're, if your conversations are leading you down the path of the need that they have to buy or they have to sell, um, then practicing the technology. We I, Personally, we don't do a lot of Zooms. We do more FaceTime meetings than we do Zoom meetings. Um, as far as like just the contract pieces, you can get through that with them by being on the phone and, and having sent that to them um, electronically. 
if they if they do have a true need true need to buy or sell it's the kid glove approach that has worked with us in wanting them to feel find out what is making them comfortable or uncomfortable that has worked for us because people are going to be in and out of their house but we want them to feel comfortable um, have a plan ready for them on how you can limit the people at a time have a strategy so that you are having the house on the market as little as short a period of time as possible, but long enough that you're getting the best possible offer for your seller um, and, and practicing your safety protocols. I don't know if anybody else is having a better luck with the Zoom meetings um, than I am if they wanna share. Yeah, I will share. Um, so here in Rhode Island, we've had a kind of a rough go about um, yeah. I think we were the highest state at some point or still still are not sure. So we've had to rely on Zoom quite a bit. Is it Kelly? I think it was Kelly. Um, and, you know, everybody kind of adjusted to it. They adjusted to it because they had to and buyers still wanted to buy and sellers still want to sell at a very high high market. So um, I'd be happy to, to discuss anything with you offline, Kelly, and tell you a little bit about how we did it. But we it was just really setting it up with expectations and giving them a little, being a little proactive with it, saying, hey, uh, because we are you know, the highest state with COVID numbers, we really want to be proactive here and stay safe. So would you mind having a Zoom call with us to go over our buyer consultation? It'll be the same thing as if we met face to face. Yeah, I just wanna make sure that you could get this information before we go look at properties together or before, you know, if you're not comfortable with going out and showing properties, that's completely fine. There is going to be an associate in your marketplace that feels a little more comfortable, possibly, that could go do the showings for you and you guys could work together. So there are a lot of different ways that you could handle um, what's going on in your area or, or in your own house. So Kelly, happy to discuss anything you'd like out, outside of here. I'm not going to tell you that it, it, it's definitely not easy. It's definitely challenging. It's challenging times. And um, just to be blunt, it sucks, but we're just kind of <laughs> adjusting and trying to um, pivot and turn and mold ourselves to what we can do. Yeah, that'll be great. Thank you, Jen. I, I would love that just because I'm literally, I, I don't even know what to do. I'm having the hardest time because I'm such a people person. Like I would meet with a hundred people a day if you would let me like that never bothers me in crowds. So I'm really finding after basically the last, you know, four months of trying to build the business back together that I feel like I have no, I don't know what direction to go into because I'm trying to be as safe as possible. But the idea of being around other people just scares me because I'm afraid that, you know, I'll turn on something and there's an agent, you know, I have everything on all of my feeds and there's another agent like, oh, I, you know, tested positive. I did this, I tested positive. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know, so I felt like I thought we were, I don't know if I felt like for a little while we were in this bubble of like, oh no, we're safe, we're careful, we really don't go near people that much, and then I see it more. So for me, it's um, it's almost like paralyzing. I'm having a harder time with it, and I was just wondering if there was anybody else. Yeah. I mean, I'm taking in, you guys have so many awesome, it's amazing what you guys give to us, but I... There's still that big hurdle, right? I get it. Yeah. yeah I totally get it. So I just put the calendar link in the chat. It's open to everybody. Now, I know we have a lot of people here, but it's open to everybody. If you want to get in there and schedule some time with me, um, Kelly, I'd be happy to go over some strategies on how we could work together to make sure that your business still grows, even with this stuff going on. Great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. There, you know, there are some comments on Facebook around this and people just talking about the things that they're doing to be safe. Um, but one of the things I just wanted to highlight is this, um, I don't show, I don't show to anyone without a pre-call and most times without an agency. So we're going to get into that, but we are, I mean, I think we always are working towards that. Right. Um, but if we're taking people out to show them um, properties, especially this is a great environment to really work on our script on, you know, um, I'm not gonna put myself at risk or you at risk um, without having a buyer's agency agreement, right? Or 
knowing that. So maybe having your pre-listing appointment on Zoom so you don't have to go out to the house. Um, you can really nail that pre-listing appointment. So when you go out for the listing appointment or maybe you do the listing appointment on Zoom and you're just doing paperwork, um, you can get really good at that stuff and limit your exposures, right? Your opportunity for exposure. Um, so I think just thinking about how do we have those conversations as professionals and keep um, the business moving because people still need us to show up and do things for them, right? Um, so how can we do it so that we're safe, they're safe, um, and we're being as professional as possible. So there's a couple things at play here, right? There's the sort of fear of COVID at play, but then there's the how do we be a professional so that we can um, keep the process moving. So it's a really good topic. So thank you for bringing that up. And there's quite a few people talking about it on Facebook too. So it's a great opportunity for you to be the leader, which is the, the seat that you want to be sitting in yeah. when you're talking to folks about buying, selling, or investing in real estate. You want them to perceive you as someone that's going to be the leader and guide them safely through the transaction. Um, so great, great suggestions and something to keep asking your, your leadership and your coaches about. Uh -huh. Anybody anybody else have an aha? Yes, yeah, Susan, I have um, one more aha, and then I'll stop being so. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. Um, so my aha about the handwritten notes, just for everyone, is that think about this, okay? We're in two, 2021, and how many people do you know that send you a handwritten note in this day and age. Okay, I was born, I won't tell you when. Um, I used to love writing letters and notes to people. That's my thing, I love to write. And I gotta tell you, people don't do it anymore. And it's other agents don't do it, trust me. There's, there's one in my town that does it and I think of her all the time because nobody else does it. Yeah. So if I needed an agent before I joined Keller Williams, I probably would have picked her because she's out and about. She sold some units in my building and she sends handwritten notes. Mm -hmm. So all I have to say is if you think it's corny, it's not. Think about when you get your mail every day. You get bills, you get junk mail, and then you see handwritten something. That's the first thing you're gonna open. Absolutely. It is for me. I'd like the bills to go in the trash personally, but- um, Hey, that would be a funny handwritten note. I'm sending you a handwritten <laughs> note so that you have, so you have something besides a bill to open. It's January, you probably have a lot of them. <laughs> um, I have a, just a quick suggestion for, you know, if you're struggling with what to say in the note, think about something you talked about in your on your call and maybe, I don't know, find a little resource about something that they might've been looking for or something that they talked about. You know, if um, maybe they were, you know, looking for a plumber, you could send them, you know, plumber's contact info or something. Absolutely. Yeah, I always, in my handwritten notes, I always, always, I've got a good memory about what people say to me somebody could tell me something like my nephew told me this summer where can I get a really good nonstick pan and I knew he wouldn't get one for like a year and I bought him one for Christmas like it just went into my I can't remember my name some days but I remembered that he needed a nonstick pan so I got it to him for Christmas and he was like <laughs> This is like giving me a million bucks. That's he, awesome. He loves to cook. So it's like, yeah, it's the handwritten notes and keeping things in your memory bank. If you have to write them down, then that'll help you write the handwritten note even better. Absolutely. So Donna, you know, what, what you just said is so important. What, what you're doing is setting yourself apart from everybody else by doing these little things by sending the handwritten notes, by remembering that a client likes something and sending it to them. Now, it might not be a pan, but it might be a book 
or it might be a saying, or it might be a photo. I mean, you could get a custom photo. For, you could steal a picture from their Facebook page of their daughter, which, you know what, see that I'll show you. This is actually a really good, if I could take it off my wall without ripping it. You see this, this is my, this is my daughter. She'll be two next week, but this is her. And I don't know if you guys know who Lori Ballin is, but she's a master marketer. She took this off my Facebook page, put it in a card and sent it to me. Wow. Do you think I'm ever getting rid of this card? No. Do you think I always remember Lori Ballin? Yep. Could you do this? That whole part of people doing business with that they know, like, and trust, the handwritten note helps with the like. Yep. It helps Going with the like. Above, above and beyond. Think Jennifer, about I, Jennifer, I'm actually doing that as we speak. A friend of mine lost her grandmother. I stole a picture off of her Facebook and I'm making a card. That's how you're going above and beyond with your services. And that's how you're going to set yourself apart. And that's when people are going to always think of you for real estate. You might not always ask them for business, but you're always being top of mind. And when you show that you care, people will show up in your world when they need you. Right. And it's estate. easy when you do care. So that's right. Just that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Come, come from contribution. Right. Yeah. Anybody know what Diana, Diana Kokoska says this all the time, right? When you come from contribution, your world changes. Things come back to you from coming from contribution. Someone said in here that they pay for the people's uh, coffee behind them. That's one of my favorite things to do. How does that make you feel? It makes you feel awesome. And then usually something else good happens that day. And it's because you're in that mindset and you're in that, that contribution mindset of well, what can I do to help? And if you have that going forward with building your real estate business, guys, I'm telling you on top of the 10-4, success is right ahead of you. Could, could you repeat that quote real quick? Which one? Coming Donna, from contribution. Donna, yeah. Coming from contribution. What did I, I don't even, see, I don't even remember. I just say <laughs> stuff and I don't remember. Ellen, do you remember what it is? Coming from contribution. Your world changes? Your world changes. Okay. Thank you. I'll get the, I'll get the right one for you, Jennifer, and I'll make sure I put yeah. it in from Diana. Uh, thank you. And that's where you reminding yourself that you're not, you're more in the business of helping people than you are in about the actual property. So when people say, what do I, well, what do you do, Susan? I, I help people make great decisions. Be the sure. source of the source. You know, if you're trying to be, a, be a value, you're putting out on your social media and, and other areas that if you need a plumber, it, if you need a favorite restaurant, if you need something, just call me. It doesn't have to be, I don't you know, I just want to be the source of, of information for you. Does anyone else have ahas before we move on? Uh, hi, Susan. I'm hey. Susan. I'm also <laughs> uh, new since October. And um, I just have a question. It's not really an ah, ah, aha question, but it's more about um, going back to offering, you know, um, information to clients, you know, and being of value. Um, so if you are on a call, for example, and someone says to you, you know, what, what is going on in the market right now? How would you respond to that? You know, 2021, what's happening in the market, especially as it pertains to Keller Williams, I suppose, and what Keller Williams can offer over other brokerages? Sure. I mean, that's a great question and something that you should practice in your scripts and responding to. Right. Um, and, and, you know, the market is is great and there are also hyper local markets so be careful of making sure that when someone asks you that question you know where they're talking about um because i know where i am like i'm in, in dover is a really hot market but if i if i go up north a little bit it might be different so know where you're talking about um and the you know the thing about real estate is that no matter what month you're in no matter what year you're in people will need to to buy and sell people will need to move so I would want to you know I would then want to flip it around and learn a little bit more about that you should know your numbers of of how many new houses are coming on the market what are the days of market looking like have that hot sheet ready every you know you can update it every week so that you can say well right now houses in Dover are staying on the market for an average of seven days what is it that what would how would moving change your life what would your life look like what's your family going through are you thinking about needing a change what what about your life is needing a change do you need more space do you need less space so the two things i would do is is know your numbers know your market um respond that way and then try to figure out what it is about that question 
it is resonating with them and thank them for asking. Yeah, right. And then, so those numbers, can I can get them from the market center here in Newport or off of? Yeah, you should yeah. be. Um, if you don't know how to run those off of your MLS, then um, ask your your coach or somebody in your market center on how to do that. But you can run those numbers that, mm -hmm. you know, for me, like different towns have very different data. So I have a few different areas that I have market data on so that I can add, I can have those ready at, at, at my fingertips. But you should be able to get, you know, how many houses are active on the market, mm -hmm. um, what their days on market are looking like. Um, and, and then find out really what they're looking for. Because if you're looking at a multifamily in Dover, the days on market are a lot longer than a single family in Dover. Mm -hmm. So great, I love it when they ask that because now you can ask them more questions. They're telling you they're interested. It's like, cool, thank you. Right. Susan, <laughs> I, just, I just dropped in the chat the link for the Rhode Island Realtors um, MLS education. You definitely wanna jump on one of those uh, MLS uh, trainings for sure. sure. Great, thanks. Cool. Hi. Um, I I don't really, this isn't really an aha, but this is more of a question that I'm maybe looking for some advice on. I don't have my video on because I am a mother, a new mom to a three month old. So I look a hot mess right now. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, I'm just looking for maybe some advice on, and it, it's wonderful to see the amount of women that we have on here too, which made me feel a lot more comfortable to ask it since seeing Jennifer's that she's got a two, two-year-old. Um, what kind of advice would you give me? I mean, I've been in this for maybe four years now. I don't do as much as I could be doing, but so that's why I wanted to do Ignite again. Um, what advice would you have for a mother of a three-month-old starting back up again? So Jennifer, congratulations. Thank you. And um, a three-month-old is a lot of work. I remember it like it was yesterday, even though she's uh, turning two. Um, and I would tell you, pick a few items that you could just be consistent at. And if you pick the daily 10-4, you're going to win. So if you just pick doing the daily 10-4 of making sure your note cards are, are written, making sure that you just add 10 people to your database and making sure that you talk to 10 people just about real estate. That's all you got to do is find 10 people to talk about real estate. That, that's all you got to do for the day and everything else will show up. Now, as far as what happens when business starts showing up and you're, you, you're still at home with your, your three month old, that will then be four month old. And then all of a sudden two years old, um, find leverage. You have a market center that has a ton of agents that are willing to help you out. And that's the great thing about Keller Williams. We have so many resources, so many, so much leadership coaches and agents that are willing to help you use that. Uh, I don't know what market center you're in, but I know that they are a market center that gives back and, and does the same thing that we all do. So use the success of others and the help of others as well. Thank you so much. How about a mom's group, a new mom's group, just to you know build your your sphere and Lisa, have like a <clears throat> yeah, like a weekly get together. It's just as much for the mom as it is for the kids. I can tell you that. Um, and that just might be a good place to start. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Anybody else? I, I think mine is um, that success leaves clues. And I lost my sharing ability, I think, when Erin became co-host. But we're almost done. Oh, I can give it back so to you. This, we only have one more slide left. Or two, so we're and it, and it's not new material. So we're going to still bust through and um, and go through them because it really is talking about the daily success habits again. Um, that these four activities will always be your priority, and I, I can say with total transparency that it's still John and I's priority. It's still making contacts every day. It's still setting appointments every day. It's still working on our database. Your database should be something that it's it's living. It has a life, uh, so you want to take good care of it. Um, those the daily success habits will be if you have a limited amount of time, they will be something that will help keep you on track. Once you do get busy, and you have more of the running business part, please make a commitment to yourself not to drop the da daily success habits. Or you will run into that roller coaster, which is really hard when you, you know, you start running your business, you're not lead generating and your income starts going up and down, which is hard. 
um, the most successful agents still have these as their priorities. Um, so it's 10 contacts added a day, 10 conversations a day, 10 handwritten notes and 10 homes previewed. Um, I think somebody had put in the chat about help with the 10 homes previewed. Um, I know we talked a lot about that, but it, it's going to open houses. It's, it's if you don't have a buyer to take on and you really wanna be previewing homes before you go shopping with other people, um, it's the open houses. It's asking people in your market center. There's some busy agents that would love for you to help them <laughs> out with um, maybe hosting an open house or if they're going there. There's vacant properties out there, folks. Um, if you're coming across, ask in your market center if somebody has um, a property listed that might be available without someone living there so that you can kind of outskirt the, the COVID problems or the COVID challenges that you might be able to go in there. Take a blank um, MLS code sheet and see if you can fill it out. That would be a great way to learn about homes, a great way to learn about information that you're going to need when you start working with sellers. Um, go through the home and uh, and see if you could have a pretend buyer and write an offer on it. What are the things that you might put in there? What are the things that you would look at from a buyer's agent? Or you can always ask too if there are um, folks in your market center that would allow you to shadow them on either shopping with a buyer or at a listing presentation. Um, and that might look a little bit different. If it, and if it is somebody is doing Zoom, ask if you can be on there without uh, as a silent participant to shadow somebody else's Zoom presentation. You really are so fortunate to be part of KW because agents want to help other agents and we want to see you succeed. So there may be opportunity for you to jump on other agents Zooming, Zoom presentations too. Um, this, the scripts, you'll be, there, there is a resource for scripts. I know that they put that up out there for you. Um, you know, one quote that I did here too is the person that makes the most out of their day gets the most out of their life. So I, I do want to encourage you to have that concept in your mind every day when you're making your success list that you want to make the most out of today so that you can make the most out of your life. And if that looks like, um, you know, how many people are you going to talk to? Have those goals set up the night before so that you start your day with success, so that you have the to-do list, that the stuff that has to get done um, so that you have no wasted time built into your day. This is a, a fast moving business. So the, the more you get your habits under control now um, will help you when you're starting to get appointments and agency contracts and then purchase and, stay, and sales contracts if that makes sense for everybody. And that is the end of what I have, Jen Bovey, unless you're seeing that I'm missing something. That's That completes our first day of Ignite. Um, I would love to get a couple of ahas. I know you did them a little earlier, but just a final aha. Um, if you haven't spoken yet today, would love to hear from you. We see so many great faces on here. And, and the only way that this really works by sharing is by the comments and by you guys uh, unmuting yourself. And another thing that Diana Kokoska says is how you participate here, you participate everywhere. So I would Truth. love for you to participate um, and, and share either a aha or uh, anything, any comment. So that way we know how to um, really improve on our Ignite and deliver some great, great stuff to you. I got something. Please do, Frank. All right, so it's not really an aha or, or so much a comment on, well, it is because we talked about earlier today ways to always be lead, lead generating, but I got a special delivery in the middle of the class today that I wanted to share. I got my Keller Williams fleece came in the mail. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and my mask just came in the mail. Oh. So I'm ready to be wearing these bad boys everywhere I go and constantly <laughs> be lead generating. That's great. That's awesome, Frank. Love it. Um, it. I want to just jump on really quickly um, just to put this kind of touring home things just to get, maybe give it a little extra spin. If you're looking at things from home and you can't physically get into properties right now, um, create a plan for yourself. So maybe target a street or a neighborhood or, uh, you know, some area, maybe the, where you live, um, 
a, a style of home, a price point. If you have a strategy around that, you can start to notice what's similar and what's different about the properties. You'll start to understand why they're priced the way they are. And um, that's really where your knowledge is going to come from. So it's always better to get into properties because you can, there's things you can smell and see that you don't <laughs> see online, right? Uh, it's very real. Um, I know I've had clients say to me, well, why is this house priced that way? And, and sometimes it's not really clear until we see the property, right? The property will tell us what it's supposed to be priced at. Um, but the more that you get in, so if you're kind of like floundering with this, how do I see 10 houses? Like make a strategy. I'm going to look at 10 colonials in, you know, this town this week, and I'm going to pay attention to what is similar about them and what's different about them. Um, and that will help you to start to make sense of the inventory. So I just wanted to add that. <laughs> Perfect. You know, I wanted to add that um, last night, Kelly Goss was uh, with us and you had a coworker. Where is your coworker? Oh, uh, yeah. I miss them. You know, <laughs> he's upstairs because, oh, okay. because I finally have created an office for myself now. And yeah. um, now he walks and grabs and breaks my glasses and <laughs> he's not allowed to co-work as much now. Yep. <laughs> Hey, you know, you bring up a good point, Kelly, about making mm -hmm. your home office. It, you know, if you want to be successful with and be on purpose about the 10, 10, the 10, four, the four tens, the mm -hmm. 10 contacts, build a bunker, figure out what your distractions are. Keep your email off. If you're not using Facebook for lead generating, turn it off, turn the notifications off on your desktop. If you need my husband needs snacks. So his bunker has snacks in it. Otherwise he leaves, he goes, gets a snack and then 20 minutes go by. So build, build your bunker for success and figure out what it is that you need in there to, to do that. Shut everything off that you don't need. If you need visual stuff, I need nothing on my desk. If I have a lot of stuff on my desk, that's just me personally. I'm like a squirrel, I'll go everywhere. Um, so if that's what you need, have a have a box somewhere just clean off your desk before you get started figure out what your bunker should look like for success build it and it will come build it and they will come yes i agree i am am doing that i've hunkered i've hunkered down i took some of my son's space but i said listen i gave it to him in the first place so now i get to take it back nice i've done nice. that uh, you know i even bought, bought myself uh, splurged on the pretty things for my desk <laughs> <laughs> you want to look at things a little bit more but yeah that is important in creating a space because yeah. I could never almost commit to anything when I just would try to sit down upstairs or sit down with him with me or whatever so yeah absolutely I have to get dressed every day even if I'm working from my home office I have to get dressed every day mm -hmm. and and for me uh, there's something mental I don't need these headphones right now people I'm home alone. Uh, but for me, when I put my headset on, I'm working. So it's like a physical thing for me. Um, if I'm if I'm at my office where there could be other people, it also tells them that I'm working. Don't interrupt me. This is my time and I protect it. So there, you know, there's little things that you can do to help set yourself up for success. I well, love that you bought yourself pretty things. Job. Such a great session today. Would you guys agree that she did such a great job? I, I think you did fabulous. What a great way to start our Ignite second, second time doing this around for the region. Thank you guys for being here. Wow. I mean, we maxed out our, our day here, but just so you know, tomorrow we have a bigger room available. So we will have more people on our Zoom page tomorrow. We apologize for the, the little technology glitch today, but we will have it fixed for tomorrow. Thank you so much for sticking in there. Susan, again, thank you so much. What a great job. I believe tomorrow we have Darren, one of our coaches, um, one of our productivity coaches in the region teaching. Another fabulous coach, guys. So make sure you be here. Nine o'clock. Have a great day. Go do your 10, your daily 10-4. Have a great thank day. You. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone.
All right, we're off Facebook. Okay. Aaron, have we got a question for you or Tim? Were we supposed to stay here or are we supposed to go somewhere? Yeah, you guys can stay here, yep. Yeah, I believe it's Coach's Corner right now, right? Yep. Yeah. I had a question about, um, there was, um, I don't know if it was you or Tim that shared it. It was about setting up your home internet so that it was working. Uh, that was Tim. Okay. Yes. So that's Tim's Tim's zone is uh, he okay, has. Okay, because I'm having know, the like worst time with that as well. I feel like everything is so slow. I bought the booster. I'm so not technically. I have no idea what I'm doing at the time. So that's why I had yeah. to ask. Um, he yeah. has like a mesh network that he, he uses in his house to increase the, you know, internet. And I haven't had to do that where I live. I just, we just added more because, you know, my kids are remote learning and my husband works from home and I'm working from home. So, um, okay. I added a booster through, we have Comcast and I added a booster through them, but even sometimes just, I mean, and I don't feel like there's that much of us. I don't know if it's just because I am kind of in the country. I'm not really sure, or I just don't know what I'm doing, which it could be. Too. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um, so that was a, a Tim thing. and That's I a Tim question for sure. Okay. All not, right, my sure. <laughs> not my wheelhouse. And then there was a, another thing that was posted about command. Um, it was specifically about command and, and all, well, just like all of the things, um, all of the technology, it was posted a, a few weeks ago, I want to say prior to Christmas about um, all of the things that, uh, that command has available to us. Is that a link that's on the Facebook page or? So I'm thinking that you're thinking, so at everyone at KW, when you log into connect, we all have our own sort of pathway and it'll say, welcome Kelly or welcome Erin. And there's a series of videos and articles that will walk you through everything that's in command. I'm thinking that's what you're talking about. Um, I can certainly post that link in our Facebook group and I can email it to you. It'll be customized to you. It will, even if I share that link, uh, it should bring you to your page and you can go through the sequence of everything that um, command has to offer. Um, okay. And it's, it's set up in a sequence that you can go from beginning to end. Okay, that would be great. If I think that's that. what you're talking about. I think, I'm not sure. I, I thought I heard it because I listened to you guys' 830 morning message. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought yeah. it was something that you were, someone was coming on to share or talk about or just all of the technology available through Keller. And command was one of them, but I hadn't, I wasn't able to see it or, or, or watch it that day. So I, I just uh, I could catch well, it again. Uh, but what you yeah, said will be yeah. great too, because that is definitely something I need since I have no idea how to do that either as of right now. <laughs> just take a little bit at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, I just put a, I just put a link in for you for connect and uh, yeah. kind of walks you through the command your business. Yeah. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah. That's probably the link that that's what I was thinking of. Um, and it should, it'll, you know, when you open it, it'll say like, hi, Kelly, what do you want to learn today? And um, it'll walk you through. There's videos, there's checklists, articles, all kinds of stuff. So great. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm not yeah. Taking you guys this time. I appreciate it though. I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Just a quick question. question. Yep, go ahead, Scott. Sorry, is there anything we should have like printed out or ready to go for tomorrow? I know there was a lot of PDFs and documents flying around. Are any of those specific to tomorrow or each day by day as we go? Or yeah, so it's really dependent on your learning style. If you need, if you like to, I like to have tangible stuff to write on mm -hmm. um, when I'm learning. So um, you can print out the P, the um, PDF. It's the, called a participant guide for tomorrow's session. Okay. It would be Spark Session 2. And if you wanted to print that out for yourself, I think you can also save it um, and then you can type into it if you save it on your own computer. Um, you download it, you should be able to type into it. I know there are people who, who prefer to do that as well. So yeah, I, I do that. I put it in my um, iPad here and I download the manual right on here. And, um, and I, I can write right on it. So I like it that way um, yeah. instead of having the stack of papers in front of me. So whatever way works for you is what I would say do. Okay. And sorry, which one was it for tomorrow you said? So it's going to be Spark Session 2 tomorrow. Lead Generation is the core of your business, I believe is the title of the class. Okay. 
and it should be, I think it's unit three. So unit one is your toolkit. Um, unit two is today's session, which is probably a little confusing, but I wanted to make sure everyone could find the toolkit. <laughs> so I put that first. Okay. Um, and then, so, so tomorrow's session will be unit three. Okay, got it, thank and you. And there's slides in there. So um, we did get a lot of requests last time for the slides that the facilitators are putting up on the screen. Um, so those are in there as well. You don't have to print them, but they're there for your reference if you want them later. Got it, okay, thank you. Yep. Melissa, do you have a question for us? <laughs> no, anybody else? All right, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump off yeah, and go on the growth call. I think so. if everybody's all set, um, we'll see you tomorrow. Was there anything else before we go? I'm all set. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Bye, guys.